yeah, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome in. It is round two of Moto Option Supercross live here on Start Your Systems. I'm Kellen Brower, and joining me tonight, Doc Smith, 250 What's Supercross up, West Coast racer, uh, made the night show at Anaheim 1 just a few days ago, and then bam, here he is in studio ready to call the MX Simulator action here tonight. Uh, first of all, Doc, how you doing, man? How's everything going? Dude, I'm doing great. We're out here racing Supercross. We're living living the dream honestly living the dream well doc actually plays mx simulator a little bit we've uh played a couple times together you yeah. and i so I, i've got to see uh your skills firsthand and i know that uh you know this game well enough to well be enough, able to yeah. call the action and you're actually friends with a lot of the guys out here tonight so yeah. i think this is kind of a cool little crossover oh yeah it's, it's gonna be fun uh i don't know everyone on here but i know a good amount so it'll be great yeah, this is going to be awesome. No question about it. Um, Hey, shout out to your sponsors as well. Smith Pro Rodeo, Z's Main Street, helping you get on the gate this year for 250 Supercross West. Um, Awesome to see you out here. Yeah. I know California isn't where you're from. You're from Texas. So out here living the dream a little bit in California, but definitely awesome to those guys to get you out here and, and oh, support yeah. you. West Coast Life has treated me great, so... So far, we're doing we're doing awesome, and I can't be happier to have them behind me. Definitely, no question about it. Well, it is round two tonight in San Francisco, and we're ready to call round two of Moto Option Supercross, bring you guys all the action. And of course, it starts with qualifying. So let's go ahead and pull up our qualifying times on the screen. We'll get a clean refresh so that we can see uh, where everybody qualified tonight. A little bit of a last minute rush here today, Doc. We didn't know if the track was going to quite make it yeah. all the way in time. We heard some rumblings about no stadium or whatever. Um, you know, from your own side of, you know, you know what it's like going to the gate in real life, and you kind of know a little bit what it's like going to the gate in sim. Yeah. With the uncertainty coming into tonight and will we race, will we not race, how much do you think that maybe affects these guys going in? Honestly, I think they're uh, they, they're probably doing pretty good with it. Uh, I mean, they do this stuff weekly, so. Yeah. Um. Yeah, they're probably doing pretty great with it, and yeah, I don't know, really know what else, what else to say about that one, but. Yeah, they're definitely feeling the flow. Let's pull up our uh, our times here from qualifying so far, at least as we have seen them so far. And hey, Payson Johnson, who we thought wasn't going to race this year, <laughs> we have heard many rumblings that he was not going to be on the gate for 2024. Fastest qualifier tonight in San Francisco, at least so far. I think we got a couple minutes for time still to roll in, but uh, 55 flat. We wa we jumped in the servers. And we saw a couple bit of the qualifying for the 250 guys. Uh, but this is a pretty long track to go 55 seconds, and uh, we got a lot of guys in that 55 second range. Close times at the top. Oh yeah, him, T Burns, and and Carter all up there in the 55 seconds. Like low 55 seconds is pretty crazy, honestly. But uh, yeah, I mean you don't really expect anything less from Payson or the other two behind them. So <laughs> yeah, well Trevor Burns also right at the sharp end. Braden Carter, Anaheim one winner last week, and um, you're a little bit close with Carter. You you obviously do some some gaming with him. Um, surprised that he goes from dead last to win the opener last week, or is this? It's just Carter now. This is what we come to expect. I mean, from everything I've seen from him, I've only I've only really really, uh, really been around him the last two years. But uh, yeah, that's, that's what I've seen for the last two years. So <laughs> I'm not even surprised. Brings the excellence every single time. Does Brandon Carter? We'll look down the list real quick and see if we see any surprises further down. Not really. Um, Looks like, uh, you know, Brandon Larson, who's always a main by guy. Ethan Parks, who is in the top 10 uh, in uh, points, ends up 32nd in qualifying here tonight. Uh, D Davis looks like he was 40th, but he just mentioned in here uh, that it looks like he got yeeted out of qualifying. So mm. maybe didn't quite make it um, in, but bubble spots for some of these guys that we normally expect to be in d mills oh it looks like chase blakely is out uh looking in byron Downen's here tonight but it looks like he didn't make it in either so some kind of familiar faces maybe not even making it into the fast 40 in this 450 class yeah it's, that's tough i mean this class is pretty pretty crazy fast anyways so i'm not surprised that some people that we already know i might not even make it yeah um, definitely some big names that are going to be missing out. Let's take a look at our 250 uh, Supercross West times here. Braden Tharp fastest 57.3. Wow, a lot of 57s. Eight guys in the 57, <laughs> six tenths between them. Tharp Stevenson and our A1 winner, Seth Shirley, right there in the mix. But just like that 450 class, Doc, close times at the top of the field. I, yeah. uh, that always excites me. I just get excited oh, yeah. when we get close times because that maybe means close racing. Oh, for sure. This is going to be, with what the track looks like, it's going to be pretty close racing with there's not two crazy separators. The whoops may like are normally always a separator. So there's only one set this weekend. So 
We should have some pretty close racing for sure. We'll take a look down these 250 times just a little bit further. A lot of guys in the 58s as well. So wow, 58 flat for Austin Schaefer in ninth. You have to go back to 26th place of 58 nine. <laughs> so you're in ninth or 26 separated by one second all the way back. And you think about someone like Sam Weigman here who qualified 26. He's only 1.6 seconds off of the top time. So that's how close times are in this 250 class here tonight. Let's see if we see any big names that maybe missed out in this 250 class. Um, looks like Tyler McGuire maybe got the last spot. Colton Heckman just missing out. Uh, Carl Novak, a name we normally see up there. Jeremy Estrella, Brent Heinzelman. We saw him doing some qualifying laps. So yeah, tough break for some of these guys. 57 riders put in times, but uh, the times at the top are too close. Even if you ran one flat, dead on the money barely, and you're not even going to make it in. Yeah, it's crazy to see that like them hitting their brakes not even a quarter of a second later is what made them get in or not get in. Yeah, I mean, and maybe you didn't launch the finish one lap because yeah, exactly. you thought like, oh, I got to restart another lap, but it, that ends up being your good lap. So yes, very close times atop the sheets. Uh, we're going to go ahead and close that window and jump into the server if I can get that to pull up. There we go. And uh, see what is going on. It looks like we are still, oh no, no we're in San Francisco. We're hanging out. T-Lang is on the gate. UIDs are about to be grabbed. Uh, so while we're sitting here, Doc, why don't we go ahead and take a look at this racetrack here tonight. Um, you're going to get the chance to obviously experience this racetrack for yourself this weekend, but what stands out to you so far on this racetrack just from the overhead view here? I mean, the turning rhythm section is always going to be a, uh, a factor because you could come in and 3-2 out of this and uh, be just, just ha fine and not have to really hit anything corner-wise or going over it's going to be a little bit more of a, an issue and making sure you're not missing any timing gates or anything along along the lines there too is going to be can be hard sometimes so yeah we saw some big lines pulled out in qualifying just from the 250 guys that three in like you said and then maybe quad to that big single triple single into the corner um we theorized maybe the 450s could go off of that table all the way to the last single before the turn but i feel like almost you when i said that were kind of like yeah maybe too much airtime, right it's going to be a real lofty jump and then you have that yeah tall you're gonna the corner too you're gonna be in there forever or you could just scrub the triple and then double into the corner which well we'll see which one's the fast line here in a little bit but uh i mean i think they're both very viable options we have one set of whoops this week we had the the two sets last week Kind of peaky, peaky boys this week. Not really pointy boys so much. Uh, we saw some guys getting a little bit sideways. I couldn't make it through a clean. Basically any <laughs> single lap that I ran through them. Um, do you like when we have one set of whoops that it is a challenge? Or do you think it's better if we have just smaller whoops in general and it makes it so that the racing is closer? I think the one set of whoops making it a challenge and then having the rest of the track for people that may not be as good in the whoops to catch up and have that closer racing is always a good thing. Now, one thing that is sticking out to me like a sore thumb is we got a nice, wide open, big corner before the finish yeah. line. And uh, we always love those transfer spot battles, the heat races for ninth, oh, yeah. the LCQs for fourth place, and almost nothing better than an inside out option before the finish line in those tight battles. Maybe see some guys get yeeted tonight. I would love to see it. <laughs> uh, it's a double-double before that. You come across the start straight right here, square up that corner, double-double up to the finish line, or maybe triple single if you're feeling a little bit frisky. Roll to the inside, get that double cleanly, and go across our Moto Option Supercross finish line jump. Another thing about it uh, coming out of this first corner of this uh, second round is basically the exact same jump that we saw at the opening round at Anaheim, this little like stair-step on-off option. We saw some guys again going... Uh, off the face of that and quadding, I guess is what you would call it, to the backside of that that first real single jump right there. Um, I know you said you weren't too much of a fan of it in real life, but seeing yeah. it now here in sim, you know, what do you think about the options that this one presents? Well, we're going to go oh. here, but yeah, what I do think, you think it presents that? a lot of different options. I think uh, it's also going to be make a lot of mis people are going to make a lot of mistakes off of it. So there comes there comes into the close racing again, having those mistakes and. And getting people to have to push back their their way up through this, the field is always a great thing to see. Well, we're going to try to show you a quick lap right here. T-Lang put me on the gate, so might as well feel my way around the racetrack a little bit and see if we can't uh, feel a little bit more comfortable with it. Maybe, Doc, you could kind of talk us through what you're seeing out here on the racetrack. Yeah, we have a pretty long start straight. And uh, coming into this, like we had last weekend, the same exact thing, just the opposite way of getting that first step on. And, yeah, we're having a... Uh, pretty long first rhythm section for us I feel like and uh, honestly 
don't even know how to talk us through this one, to be honest. Well, there's <laughs> oh, a crash down. anyways, so. <laughs> um, so baseball stadiums is another topic, I feel like, that uh, comes up with these opening rounds because otherwise, besides Anaheim and now San Francisco, we have nothing but football stadiums. So your experience, you get to see the longer lap times this past weekend in Anaheim. Uh, it's going to be kind of similar to this one. What do, you, what do you like or dislike about the baseball stadium layouts? I mean, I think uh, you have a lot more, like, 180s instead of just 90s and stuff on them so that can either really play into how you ride ride and carry speed around corners or can really hurt you so i uh i actually enjoy them just because i like just more 180 style corners but um yeah it's just it's all about just seeing these if these guys can carry the speed or not through these corners yeah, definitely corner speed is a premium on these tracks because there's really, there's more of them, right? There's more corners yeah. in general because you get a football stadium track, you maybe get, what, like five bull berms and a couple 90s. Mm -hmm. This one you have, you have like 160 degree corners yeah, and then you right. have like a 75 degree corner sweeper or something like that. So you got a real uh, interesting mix of corner sequences to deal with and uh, never really feel like you're going like completely straight sometimes I feel like on yeah, these tracks, right. right? You're always turning or about to square up a corner or something like that. Um, but it definitely creates a unique uh, experience to watch these guys try to figure out the racetrack. Oh yeah, watching you earlier trying to figure this place out was pretty funny actually. So that's probably gonna be me this weekend in, in real life too. Well, it's still comedy right now because I'm making this look like just absolute dog water as I go around the track. But well, we got that rhythm section clean, so we're starting to feel the flow uh, just a little bit. We also have um, two Supercross triples this week. We did not have those at Anaheim one. We just had that one after yeah. the, the finish line jump. Um, I know for, you know, in real life, you get to r relax maybe a little bit off a of Supercross triple, take a breather or something like that. Do you like having two Supercross tracks, uh, Supercross triples, I should say, on a virtual track? A little bit more opportunities to maybe uh, swag out and scrub down a jump. Yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's another way you can cut your time, your lap Ooh. time down a little bit, but just staying lower than everybody else. Now, granted, I'm not the best at this video game, so half the time I'll whip and just wad myself off the face. <laughs> um... <laughs> But, uh, I mean, for these pros, it's a really good way to cut some time if someone's trying to play it safe in front of you and you just, if you're trying to send like Payson normally does, he's probably going to be upside down on that thing quite a lot this evening. I'm curious of your theory on this because uh, Payson Johnson doesn't make the main event last week, so it didn't really go the way that he wanted to coming off of not maybe going to race. Now he's fastest qualifier oh, tonight. Yeah. So two very odd ends of the spectrum for Payson Johnson what version of him are we going to get tonight? Is is he back? Are we back to normal pacing, you think? I mean, from everything I heard, and like you spoke about last weekend, everyone was saying he wasn't even playing over the summer. Like yeah. after, after outdoors and stuff like that, he just didn't really play. So, um, I mean, he might be getting back into his flow, but we'll probably still see some more mistakes than normal for him. Yeah. Um, yeah just definitely. because he, from what everyone says, hasn't been playing as much, hasn't been on the game, and it's just that muscle memory goes away a little bit. Yeah, yeah, no question about it. So we'll see, <clears throat> excuse me, how he fares tonight. Um, quick shout out real quick in the chat. Saw that uh, Jay Wisdom, aka Jet Wisdom yeah. X, uh, resubbed Prime for <laughs> the second month in a row. So shout out to him. Hubbard also resubbed. So thank you so much. And then Mikey B331, thank you so much. Uh, tier one sub for you as well. First time you're joining us here on the channel. We're going up in subs every single week and you guys... The support is continuing to roll in. Very, very much appreciated uh, for that. I also want to give a quick shout out right now. We have a new sponsor on the stream this week. It is the Design Lab Co. Uh, you guys may remember an old face, Nick Porter, who used to race MX Simulator back in the day. I don't even remember the last time he raced. Maybe 2017, 2018 area was the last time we saw Nick Porter out here. He now owns a graphic company based out of Northern California. So definitely check out the Design Lab Co. That's the designlabco.com and uh, check them out. They're going to be bringing you guys the whole shot here tonight in the 250 and 450 main event. So we really appreciate them jumping on board and helping out with the stream. And we'd really appreciate if you guys go over and check them out uh, and maybe check out some graphics or some other things that are available over there and uh, support the people that support us. So thank you, the Design Lab Co. for jumping on board this week. All right, looks like we are getting ready to go for 250 West Heat number one. Finally ready to drop the gate here tonight in San Francisco. We'll make sure we have our proper names all set up for you guys as well so you can see what is about to go to the gate. 250 Heat one, there we go. And uh, it's time, Doc. It is time. 
see what happens here tonight in San Francisco. Here's a look at everyone going to the gate in 250 heat number one. Uh, what jumps out off the page to you in this one? Uh, I mean, John Hallman with a pretty solid qualifying time is it's great to see. One of my buddies from back home in Texas. So, um, I mean, I'm really surprised where uh, where Caden, like, I didn't think he's, he had that great of a, a qualifying time this weekend. So, we'll see how that goes over the over the night. But it's one of the people that we constantly play the game with. So, we'll see how that ends up. But I'll tell you what's jumping off the page to me in this one is Evan Holt, who almost won the opening <laughs> round last week, and it was a bit of a bummer. Two laps to go from the end, and lays it down trying to quad into the corner before the on off at a1 uh, said he was bummed in himself a little bit for going for it he was going to consider backing out of it ended up going for it anyway uh, but looking for redemption here tonight in san francisco hoping to start off with a heat win and getting back lift over by whoever that was on the 49th so we'll do a little tire taperonis and uh back flipping off well, who was that not no, even on the uh... gate 49 don't even know where they're at all right that was John Hellman. All right, it was John Hellman. It was John okay, Hellman. You, you know these people better than I do. Boy, you got to him at the very end right there, so okay. I said the name and everything. All right, all right, I got you. Um, also, people in the chat, let us know if uh, the audio levels are up or down or anything like that. want to make sure that the audio sounds crisp for you guys here tonight. All right, folks, it's time to get revved up and ready to go. Nine, go to the main event. Let's go racing in San Francisco. Oh, 23 machines gonna get to the corner first. He's almost laid it down. It was Tharp, our fastest qualifier, oh. trying to quad over him on the Suzuki. Didn't see who that was. <laughs> and then Tharp goes down off the uh, left side of the track right there. So Steve Bono goes to the race lead. And Doc, already we're seeing chaos in the first rhythm section. Yeah, surprisingly, everyone got to the first corner clean. And then as immediately into the first tabletop, there was crashes. And I was, they just snowballed from there. Yeah, no question about it. Those guys crossing up from each other trying to quad in, triple in, whatever it is. His bottle almost loops out at the end of the whoops right there, riding that rear tire as we head into the sand section on the first lap. Looks like it is indeed Evan Holt closing up right behind him in the two spot. Then we got Tyler Showey and Tyler Blowers going at it, a battle of the Tylers for third place right now. We'll have to try to figure out where Tharp ended up because he went backwards in a hurry. But at the end of lap number one, Steve Bonnell is leading here in San Francisco. And I guess the good news for these guys out front, Doc, they got away from all that chaos and everyone else went down behind them. So they've got a lot of breathing room behind them going back to that final transfer spot. Yep, as long as they can keep their head on straight, this is a pretty easy qualify for them. We're also seeing kind of what the race lines are gonna look like in this 250 division. Those guys jumping across the start straight off triple and then quad into the corner and then as expected right there triple in quad over with the triple single into the corner mm -hmm. back to back long rhythm sections but certainly a lot of options available oh yeah i think these whoops like we said earlier when we saw in the first lap is going to be definitely a uh, thing to keep this race close so as long as they can keep their head on straight through there i think they'll this is pretty simple and easy for bono to get a get a straight quality in yeah he's looking pretty comfortable out front so far evan holt is Lurking back there, but not really close enough yet to make a move or really think about an opportunity to pass. Tyler Showy has dropped the other Tyler, Tyler Blowers, and he is now all by his lonesome in third place. Let's scoot back. Cooper Hunt has moved up into fourth with Blowers now fifth. Sam Weigman in sixth. Tyler Nichols is seventh. And Tharp, who went down on that uh, first straightaway, already up into eighth. So good recovery for our fastest qualifier so far. Now making his way up into the eighth position. And I think for him, at this point, you're trying to focus forward and get into that top five and salvage a good gate pick. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, as long as he can, like, I, I in this track, with how people are crashing like they are, I honestly would say just, just keep just keep pushing forward and but not trying to break the bank with, <laughs> with crashing on this track. It seems pretty difficult tonight. Yeah, it also looks like times, because they're so close, everyone's kind of running those similar lap times and really going to be difficult to work your way forward and make a pass stick, especially with the times being as close as they are. So Blower's kind of squaring off with Tyler Nichols, another battle of the Tylers going on right there. And Tharp, of course, in eighth. Maverick Schneider has moved, uh, was in ninth, I should say. Timmy Briscoe just took it over, I think. Or am I missing out? No, there is Snyder. Okay, so I missed Snyder. Must have been off the track because we went right from him to uh, back there with Timmy Briscoe. But Snyder, a little bit of breathing room. When you're in this spot in ninth like this and you have about three seconds behind you, how much is it versus, you know, looking ahead and trying to plan out another pass perhaps, or 
settling down and knowing I got a transfer spot. I don't want to blow this. I mean, as long if he has someone calling for him, then they're probably telling him just just be smart and push it to the end. And but uh, if I'm by myself, I'm probably I'm trying to get someone between me and tenth. Okay. I don't I don't want to be in that last transfer spot because we all know what happens when you're in that last person. You're that last person transferring. You are the target. Yep. Those guys behind them. Uh, really starting to close that gap down. It's Briscoe and Heilman who are starting to close it in. Heilman thinking of an inside move there on Timmy Briscoe. Just couldn't quite make it stick. And option line in the sand. Uh-oh, that is, who's that? That's Sam Weigman on the 14, just picking it up. And so that will indeed move Briscoe into the final transfer spot. Heilman and Weigman kind of checking each other through that rhythm section. We got three riders nose to tail in a battle for the final transfer spot. Now if you're Briscoe, defensive lines. He's cutting off those corners a little bit early to make sure he doesn't get taken high in a berm. So it's going to be Briscoe with Heilman and Weigman right behind him. Tyler Nichols just behind that. So it actually looks like Heilman, because of Nichols falling back, is in the final transfer spot. And he is sandwiched. Between 8th and 10th place, Sam Wagman trying to figure oh, out a way track. back by. Hotman is off the track. Good job of re-entering, but maybe missed a timing gate. That could be crucial if it stays this close to the end. I don't think it's staying that close to the end. I think we're going to see some chaos here in a minute. Yeah, I think there's going to be some aggressive racing here coming here pretty shortly. Yeah, Wagman looks like he is feisty and ready to make a pass stick. You see Heilman going for that option triple-double line through the sand. Kind of interesting how that split works out. You get a little bit higher going with that triple Oh, option. my goodness. Wow. Weird crash, Heilman, front end tuck, and off the machine. I don't know what happened right there, Tom. Yeah, I have no clue. I think must be a sick spot. <laughs> just, uh, I guess, on the brakes and maybe leaning too fast at the same time. Just, I don't know, pop that front end out from under. Never seen a front tuck like that. <laughs> that is one of the weirdest slide outs I've ever <laughs> seen, no question about it. So Weigman moves into the final transfer spot for the time being. He is still working on Timmy Briscoe as they battled out for eighth spot. And that is really oh. tight and actually gets hung up a little bit. So All now righty. here comes Tyler Nichols. He's going to be able to triple in. Will he be able to make this pass stick? He's going to case double and not quite get there. The battle still continues. Weigman in the ninth and final transfer spot. And Nichols is right there. Now in this position, who do you want to be? Do you want to be Nichols following or do you want to be Weigman actually in the transfer spot? I, I want to be Nichols in this and I want to, uh, I'm just going to ride smart. I'm going to ride my, the laps and lines I've been hitting and just wait, wait, wait for them to make a mistake. This track, like we've just seen, is very prone for mistakes. So just wait for somebody else to make a mistake and just stay clean. There Ooh, it is. Just like that. Weigman a mistake and Nichols around the outside. Weigman picks it up really quickly, but he is now outside looking in. Tyler Nichols or Spink on the number 73 ride has moved up into ninth here and it looks like time has now expired so I think we're getting the white flag next time by for our race leader but the battle for this final transfer spot remains hot and heavy Nichols versus Weigman and look at that there's a host of riders just ahead of them so they could get up there and mix it up maybe they both make it in or are they going to be too concerned battling each other perhaps yeah I think Nichols is just as long as he can ride smart, this is this is it for him. Maybe he can get up and get in that next battle, but not try to push it too crazy. Ooh, Weigman Ugh. put a nose in right there. Definitely let him know he's there. Now they're both bouncing through the whoops kind of awkwardly. Oh, Weigman down the inside gets it. Nichols trying to fight back. Different option. Weigman is going for a ride, and he's down. That's so tough. Nichols through into ninth, and here comes John Heilman again. White flag is in the air. One lap to go. Can Tyler Nichols hold on to this final spot? Much as I like saying, just keep riding your laps. I kind of want to see a mistake out of Tyler Nichols to see my buddy get in tonight. But uh, we can see. We'll just see what ends up happening. I know John can get pretty crazy sometimes and make some mistakes himself. So what we'll do you see expect? What, from, what do you expect from John here? Is he going to get aggressive? Uh, oh, he might oh, not need to. He won't need to now. But uh, well, who is that down? Well, Briscoe went down. I'm trying to figure out who the other Suzuki rider is down. It may be a lapped rider. So things changed around. Meanwhile, up front. Speaking of change. Evan Holt went to the lead about halfway through by the looks of it and has pulled away. He's bringing Brayton Tharp with him, but it is going to be Evan Holt picking up with that second place finish at Anaheim one last week, right where he left off. Evan Holt takes 250 heat one here in San Francisco. It's going to be Tharp second. Looks like Bonnell third, Hunt fourth, Blowers in fifth, Showy sixth, Maverick Snyder seventh. John Heilman looks like he has got eighth locked down. Lucas Brun is ninth. Weigman is going to try to close this down with two turns to go, but I think he is going to run out of time. Lucas Brun in the final corner and out will go to the main event in San Francisco. And Weigman down before the finish. 
solidifies that because that'll be way too much time lost. Penalty's not going to affect that. So Wagman 10th. It looks like Cash Woods 11th, Timmy Briscoe, Evan Vanderkoy, Tucker Zimmerman, Tyler McGuire, Ryan Anderson, Zane Yurick, Caden Speck, Jackson Lindsay, all headed to the LCQ out of this one. They all chased home the number 18 ride. District Designs, Evan Holt takes the win in 250, heat number one. Well, Doc, one race in the books. Evan Holt making this one look easier than it should. Uh, but what do you think about this racetrack so far here tonight? Kind of one line, but also because there are options available, I opportunities think, present. I think it's going to be one of those things where if one person crashes, it's going to be a domino effect. But uh, I think as long as you can, I mean, if you can get out in the top half of the class and start, you you have a great chance of of being top five by the end of that race. So, um, yeah, I think it's going to be a great race tonight, and uh, the track's going to most likely form up pretty good in the main events. Yeah, the name of the game, I feel like, is. You know, limiting those mistakes, especially in these heat mm -hmm. races, especially in the 250 class yeah. where there's plenty of mistakes to be had for these guys. Uh, so like you said, not having those early problems and getting clean air, yeah. being able to get your own kind of vibe going and feel your flow a little bit is definitely the key to the races uh, here tonight. So 250 West heat number two coming up next. Um yeah, definitely an exciting prospect to see Evan Holt rebound with a good result in this heat race. Uh, I feel like he kind of flew under the radar coming into this season. There was a lot of talk about Seth Shirley, maybe even talk about Braden Tharp, who qualified fastest here tonight. But uh, Evan Holt's got the number 18 on his bike, and uh, that's worked pretty well for people in real life. Yeah, so maybe real for life. Holtzy, it's going to work well this year. As long as we're not putting the 96 on there, I think we're good. <laughs> oh, too soon. <laughs> too soon. Hunter Lawrence missing <sighs> the main event last week. Um but yeah, we saw Evan Holt almost win that main event at Anaheim 1. For him, what do you think he's done mentally this week to kind of regroup and, and maybe try to right the ship again this week? I don't know. I mean, I think it's just one of those things you kind of just say, this already happened. Let's go ahead and just move on from there and continue to to ride like we know how to. So. Yep, I think that uh, that's going to be what he's taking home with him after Anaheim won and definitely rolled into San Francisco with a little bit more momentum. Well, coming up in 250 heat number two, we're about to see our defending champion and red plate holder, the number one machine of Seth Shirley. And Seth was able to win the Anaheim opener last week. And we talked a little bit about coming into the season. Seth Shirley maybe made a bit of a bold claim saying he's trying to go for the perfect season. I know that maybe ruffled a few feathers, but uh, backed it up so far and wins the opening round. Um, you know, if you're one of the competitors on the track, does that give you extra motivation? Knowing uh, someone wants to go perfect, you want to end that perfect season before it really gets started? I think it does, but also is the fact this game has a pretty decent amount of RNG in it where we're not going to where you're going to see the small mistakes that may be a glitch in the game necessarily not the rider making an actual mistake so um, the perfect season in real life is crazy hard but in this game has got to be even harder yeah no question we've seen guys come close before i think back to jeremy siebold i believe it was in 2018 i believe uh only did not win one of the 250 west main events that year i think he even won a main event Racing a 125, that's how good old Jeremy Siebel was. And we saw a little bit of that old school Jeremy Siebel come back at Anaheim 1. But uh, clearly, I feel like Seth coming in was was the man to watch in terms of being the class of the field. But like you said, man, anything could happen. Weird start. Heck, we saw in real life, Hunter Lawrence, you get someone yeah. chopping off your front wheel going to the first corner, and you end up missing the main event because of it. So, um, yeah, anything could happen in this game. Certainly, like you said, a little bit RNG. Oh yeah, and that. we've even, we've even seen people have issues with Wi-Fi and stuff like that. So, at least I have. I don't know if it's happening in the pro stuff, but I've seen people have issues with Wi-Fi and not even make the motos. So, yep. get that McDonald's Wi-Fi sorted, <laughs> and then you are a-okay, good to go. So, Seth Shirley in this one, Holden Coat, Joey Arico, Hayden Stevenson, Jesse Furtado, Luke Bowser, Cameron Perkins, Tanner Thorson, Alec Horn. Names go down a plenty. Anybody you're cheering for this one in specifically? I'd love to see Alec do good. All Another right. person I know from Texas. So there you go. And he's on the same same team I'm on. So that makes it even better. All right, Doc Smith is pulling for Alec Horn here tonight. We'll see if he can make it cleanly out of this heat race. Tanner Thorson lining up there right next to Seth Shirley. Alec Horn way down the inside. 30 card goes sideways. 250 heat two in San Francisco. Let's go. Oh, we got someone looped out on the gate, and he's down. Land rush into that first corner as a Yamaha gets oh. there first and goes way off the track. It was Sonny Spicer, 
Alec Horn quadding in there out of the go. first section gets that hole shot, and he's off to the races. I think I saw Seth Shirley going down in second place behind him. There's Alex looking happy. The bike humps are out. Alec Horn is leading in San Francisco, and uh, because of that crash in second place, big gap all the way back to second place already for him. So this is ideal scenario for the 27 right here. Oh, yeah, as long as he can keep his head on straight. I, I know Alec pretty well. I've watched him play enough races to know that he can make some pretty costly mistakes um, once we get closer to the end of this race. But uh, I think he knows what he's doing and just play it safe and get on, get it on in. Knowing him as he do, as you do, I should say, um, he gets a start like this. He's out front four seconds already in the race lead. Does he settle down or does he get more hyped at this kind of situation? Uh, I think he's going to be right there in the middle. I think he's going to say continue to push it, but uh, not so far that he's going to make huge mistakes. All right, so he's going to try to settle it in and, and get away with this race lead. Austin Schaefer is in the two spot. Daniel Olsen third. Cameron Perkins right there in fourth with Holden Coat trying to jump by him, and he will indeed make the pass. Holden Coat going by Perkins. Down goes Race Cobble. He was in the sixth spot. A lot of riders are going to go by. He is going to fall out of a transfer spot. Coming through as well was Seth Shirley. Let's see where the one machine has made it up to and go on board with him. He's up to 10th now, but he is going to jump into ninth place right there and be able to double into this corner. Another rider down. That is Horn. Alec Horn is down with the race lead, no and he took Luke Fowler with him. He gets up still in a transfer spot, but that's how quickly your fortunes can turn. Oh. Big lead out front to Crashing ninth in a heartbeat. We got guys going down in the whoops. Looks like Horn's going to move into eighth. It was Joey Arico down, but yeah, if you're Horn, First to ninth is uh, now full panic mode, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, I, he's fast enough that he can get by some of these guys, but uh, he needs to lock in and just stay smooth. It, other, let other people make mistakes, don't make them yourself. Yep, he's going to try to settle into this group and maybe make some passes. He's got Dash McMillan right in front of him, Emmanuel Cepeda, Cameron Perkins, all kind of finding the flow in these uh, opening laps of 250 heat number two. Seth Shirley already making some good progress. He's up into the fourth spot. He is uh, five seconds back of our lead trio right now. So let's go back out front and see what's going on. Austin Schaefer has taken over the race lead for NetJets. He's bringing with him Holden Coat on that privateer number 381 effort. And Daniel Olsen also up in the mix. But uh, good ride here for Schaefer, getting a little bit of taste of what it's like to lead a heat race out here. Maybe build some confidence for the main event and uh, also starting to pull away a little bit. So Austin Schaefer feeling the flow out here in San Francisco right now. He's looking pretty good. He... Um... He, uh, I mean, just being really smooth, and that's how you win a race, right? Just staying, getting up front, and just being smooth about it. We're going to have people behind them starting to send stuff and probably end up on the ground because of it. Yeah, well, I mean, like you talked about, all it is in these heat races is trying to get some clean air and a little bit of breathing room out front, and nothing is better than leading the race, of course. But I think you look back behind him, and you go back to fourth, and there's already seven seconds yeah. back to fourth place. That also kind of takes the pressure off your shoulders a little bit, knowing that there is a big gap behind you. If you crash now, you're not going to lose a transfer spot. You'll still get up in a transfer spot. So you can definitely kind of settle down and relax if you're Schaefer, but not too much because you got Holden Coat breathing down your neck, and Daniel Olsen's right there. So I uh, can't get too comfortable, but now Coat's making a mistake, and Olsen, oh, oh. is going to go down on that last whoop. Looks like... Uh, Maybe about halfway through the whoops tonight is where guys are maybe you know duck, ducking yeah. their nose down or something. I think I think it's more going to be in the 250 class. They look pretty pretty gnarly for 250s. They're just going to lose a little bit of that drive. Um, a lot, I'm guessing a lot of these 450 guys are going to be pretty just fine in these, just because they're going to have so much more power to be able to drive and stay on top of all of them. But uh, we'll see how that goes once we get to that heat one and 450 class. But um, right now, I mean, they're dropping in about halfway through. Yep. Yep, definitely halfway through. Got to try to figure out how to continue that drive on a 250, maybe shift up a gear or so. So Shirley's moved his way into third. This is a pretty solid recovery for him after that first turn or second turn crash, I should say. He was in second place, got uh, mixed up with someone on a cow. He didn't quite get the number on that, but uh, Seth Shirley right here doing a really good job of recovering. And for him at this point, Again, gate selection seems to be a bit of a premium at these races. If you can get on that inside of the box going to the first corner, it's going to be huge for you. So third place should do the job for Seth, and I'm sure he's pretty happy with this position. Yeah, and he actually hit those boots really good that lap, too. He didn't drop in much at all. I, um, In the beginning of the race, you asked who I was excited for. I mean, of course, Seth's going to be really good, so I didn't really say much about him. I know he's pretty much got a quality to the main dead set as long as he can not disconnect from the race. Yep. Well, he's up to second now. Looks like Holden Coat was down on the outside of that corner right there. Sticking on board with Seth here for a minute, just kind of taking a look at what this track looks like 
uh, as he circulates around hit from the first person perspective. Um, another thing that we saw at the opening round that we hadn't seen in Moto Option Supercross before is JLV's new update with the tread marks added to the game so we can kind of see where the lines are forming, where guys are jumping, and so on and so forth. Someone like you who uh, plays Sim pretty regularly, what do you think about this update? Is it cool? I think it's pretty cool. Um, as long as you get your settings right, it looks great and uh, doesn't really affect the, the computer too much. So that's, that's one thing I was worried about. I play on a gaming laptop, so didn't want it to affect me too much on that. But man, it, it looks great, and um, especially on some of the tracks that uh, have fully supported it. Yeah, what do you think about how it shapes up versus, you know, the erode in the corner and stuff like that? You, it was always tough for some guys to see the erode and kind of how those ruts formed, and then you add this other element of these lines being everywhere. Does the crossover seem okay, though? The, you, you can still see those ruts in the corner okay? Yeah, everything seems about seems actually a little bit better because it's, of course, going to be a little bit darker. You're going to see exactly where the erode's forming and not necessarily, um, like, kind of having to guess a little bit because... Whenever you'd see the E road on the, on the old snapshot, it just didn't. It, you're kind of having to guess. Oh, okay, it might be actually right here instead of over there. But uh, it form it forms great and it looks great. So happy with it. Definitely, no question about that. So Shirley continues to circulate in second place. Our race leader continues to be Austin Schaefer, and he is about to come to the white flag. Let's go back a little bit. This is third. Alec Horn is in fourth now. Daniel Olson fifth. Manuel Cepeda sixth. Tanner Thorson seventh. Race Cobble in eighth. And now Ryan Pinkerton has found his way into the final transfer spot for Yogi Designs. Luke Fowser outside looking in, but uh, we know Fowser's got the speed to find his way in. You think he's going to close this gap down and make things interesting on this final lap? Yeah, I think these two right here are going to battle it out and probably end up slowing each other down. So, oh, they just, just small mistakes like that. We're going to see Fowser probably on the back of them by the end of this lap. Not well, sure by the, by who is, lap. is behind Pinkerton because they're not... Oh, it's a lapper. Oh, that's, it looks like it might be a lapped rider, but definitely kind of mixing it up with Pinkerton a little bit. No yeah. one really in front of Pinkerton, but oh. Fowler just jumped off the track, so that is really going to hurt his chances. So now Pinkerton, three-second gap, maybe just settle down, try to cruise this thing home, don't need to do anything wild, and bring this thing home and put it in the main event. Let's sneak back out front, because coming to the flag in two corners from this point in time is NetJet's Austin Schaefer, who is... Taken over the race lead off of that crash from Alec Horn and taken away with this one. 250 Heat 2 is going to go to Austin Schaefer with a nice dub here for the NetJets program. Seth Shirley ends up in second in this one, so he's got at least third or fourth gate pick going to the main event. Holton Coat in third. Daniel Olsen fourth with Emmanuel Cepeda in fifth. And it's worse in sixth. Alec Horn in seventh. Race Cobble eighth. And Pinkerton looks like he has got this. Locked down for ninth. No real pressure from behind. He's going to double-double his way through. And Ryan Pinkerton goes to the main event out of 250 heat number two. Yogi Designs put in the main event. But his teammate Hayden Stevenson, a little less fortunate there for the 413 ride. He's not going through. Or the 12 ride, I should say. He's not going through. Cameron Perkins, Dash McMillan, Ben Narana, Sonny Spicer, Luke Fowler. Wow, he lost a lot of spots. Oh, and he went for the, the oh, kill wow. right there on somebody. Uh, I don't know who that was. Is that that lapped rider that we were trying to focus on? Jesse Furtado. It looks like it may have been, yep. I wonder if he was uh, part of the problem why Fowler couldn't get up in there and mix it up for that final transfer spot. Fowler looked like he was pretty frustrated with whatever that situation was. So he'll cross the line now 17th. Like I said, Carson Bolin Talon from Precision is out as well. Sonny Spicer not going to make it. But all these guys up ahead looks like uh, no penalties to be had passed around outside of our transfer spots and Austin Schaefer taking the dub in 250 heat number two that'll wrap up our 250 West heat racing action and Doc it's time for the big boys 450 heat number one coming up next I'm kind of excited for this because I just want to see if we're going to see some big dog lines. We're going to see some quads. We're going to yeah, see some well, fives out there. What are we going to see? We're about to find out because the quality quality session that we joined into earlier only had two fifties in it. So we're about to see uh, what these, what these big bikes are capable of on this track. Well, I feel like the suggestion that, you know, Payson Johnson went what 55, three or something They're like that. They're doing something pretty big. Yeah. And, and yeah. the two fifty guys in the low 57s, two seconds difference it's not just power alone. There has yeah. to be something on the track that they're doing different. So very keen to see what option lines are available for the 450 guys out here. Um, going back to Anaheim 1, though, last week, Carter comes through the field and, and wins the uh, main event from basically dead last. 
the rest of the field is that kind of like a oh boy this is going to be a long year or does it's everyone going to be a really long at, year yeah going to be a long year okay so i was going to say do you think everyone looks at a1 is like ah it's a fluke maybe things will be different now carter looks pretty dominant already huh yeah but i think payson is gonna he's he, i mean he's gonna get faster at the year too so i, I know carter's pretty dominant is a crazy good rider and like a player in this game but uh I mean, there's other people that can be just as good as him on their good days. So, um, we're just we're just gonna have to see. I think I think Braden's crazy, and I think he'll do good tonight. But uh, we'll see where that ends up at for him. What do you make of uh, Alexis Leclerc? He was able to. Uh, sorry, just trying to fix something on the stream here, real quick. Alexis Leclerc was able to come back to the sixth spot uh, last week after himself also having a tough go in the main event went down early i think at one point he also was dead dead last like carter was ends up getting all the way back to sixth um not obviously a top five not great points at the opener but i think for him right leave with some level of salvage ride after not so great of a start in the main event yeah it's definitely a salvage ride for him i know i've, I've watched him race with with all everyone else for the last couple of years and he's way better than a sixth place so but um I think everybody's gotten a little bit quicker this year. Everyone's got a little bit more consistent, realistically. So sixth place is still a great finish in general, but uh, he's as long as he can get a good start, he'll do a lot better than that. Well, this man right here was the talk of Anaheim 1. He came within basically a lap of winning the Anaheim opener, and it's been a few years since we've seen Jeremy Siebold as he bust out a pretty yeah. big boy line right there. <laughs> been a few years since we've seen Jeremy Siebold really be Jeremy Siebold. Uh, great to see him battle for the win at the opener. We gonna see more of it again this week. Is Seabolt back? I think Seabolt's back. I think he is too. He looked so good at the opening round. I think it was just the weirdest little crash as well. I don't know if you saw last week how he I crashed did, yeah. on that dragon's back, but I mean, I, talk about gut wrenching in that situation to have everything go right except for one thing go and wrong and cost the, you the win. Yeah. In which, like, like I said, I'm a slight bit biased. Carter being my teammate, he does my IRL graphics and some of my IRL gear. So, um. I'm a little bit biased and I was stoked for Carter, but that's that's got to be gut wrenching just to have that happen to you. Yeah, well here is Carter, fresh red plates, or should we just say the red plates? I mean, he's he's had them on all off season, I'm sure, and now he's still rocking it here in San Francisco after winning the opening round last week at Anaheim. And Carter, man, oh, three time fun. champ, is just scrubbing stuff down. We're seeing some seeing some bigger lines in the 450 class, but the question about the 450 class and the bigger lines is not. Can they do the bigger lines? Is can they do the bigger lines consistently? Because it's always yep. tough to go those five or maybe even a six over something crazy in race conditions. Yeah, and ride, riders are around you. Once that track starts deforming a little bit, everything gets a little bit harder to hit consistently. So we'll see how that that plays out tonight. I think um, I don't think the heat races are really long enough for that to be a huge factor. But once we get into those main events, it's going to make it make a huge difference. Absolutely. So there's Carter, Anthony Pachone. Connor Holiak, Kevin Frazaka, and there's Jacob Hubbard. So Phil's guys ended up in this heat race for sure. So sure Carter and Hubbard, who you're quite familiar with, they're going to be hanging out together and talking each other through this race. And who knows, maybe we'll get a replay of Anaheim 2 Moto 1 from the Triple Crown last year between yeah. these guys in the heat race right now. love to see it. I know Hubbard, I'm, I'm pretty confident Hubbard's back at his house now because he, um, he was in California this last weekend to um, watch A1 and got got there in time to be able to have to would have to play on a different setups uh, so uh I, i'll see a lot better out of hubbard this weekend all right we'll see if we're he can make it race. through the heat race this time because he couldn't yeah. do that last week but here we go 450 heat one from san francisco is off and running hubbard's got a great start out of the middle and i think he's going to control it in the first corner the 78 machine gets there first he is through the first cor corner first and he's off with the race lead he's bringing carter with him so here we go just like we talked about carter's thinking inside here to go for the double in oh. and he jumps off the track and is going to give hubbard some clean space that is eaglin on the 24 this is a heavy heavy heat race yeah. siebel eaglin hubbard carter all in this one and good to see the 24 machine of eaglin with a good start looks like carter was able to settle in the third spot 450 guys slightly cleaner through the whoops but not as clean as i expected on the first lap yeah the, once they get a line built into coming into them it'll be they'll be they'll be pretty solid through them so yeah just gotta wait for that couple laps in and then then we'll see those those smooth clean lines wow look at that eaglin uses that inside move we got dooleys over the finish line jump hubbard goes defensive squares it back off 
Off the Supercross triple. Dooleys! He got him again. Let's see if Eaglin squares off this corner. No, he's going to follow him right around the top. Neither of them go all the way onto oh. that tabletop. Oh, Hubbard oh my goodness. with the barrel roll and down. Oh, went for it. He, it went, he, he sent a big line right there. That would have been... That probably would have separated them a little bit, but that's, that's the cost you have whenever you mess up on them. Well, now he is in the hell of mid-pack battles in MX Simulator <laughs> Racing and trying to deal with that chaos. Go back out front, and we now see that Eaglin has taken over the lead. He's got Carter in second. Rockefeller has now moved into the three spot. Good ride for him so far with Holiak, Seth Carr, Kevin Frazaka, Frank Jackson, Devin Davis, Jared Gummison, all in a freight train top nine right there. And then J.R. Ray is Jacob Hubbard in 10th and 11th so Hubbard goes right from the lead out of a transfer spot that is how close the action is in this 450 class I think we got a battle brewing out front Doc here comes Carter uh, on Eagland. I know Carter is pretty consistent in this dang game uh, I, I don't think I've seen anyone else more consistent most like 90% of his crashes are not his necessarily his fault just the situation he was put in but uh, so I mean we know that he can just stay right there and on the back of him and wait till he makes a mistake. Yep, he's closed up that gap pretty quickly on Eaglin, and I think we're about to see a good little battle between these two right here as Carter does a little tire tappers on that roller section before the Supercross triple into the whoops. Eaglin hopping a little bit. Carter pretty clean on top of him. That was a, maybe that was the smoothest a great run. run we've seen yeah. out of the 450 guys so far. Eaglin with a really good line in the sand, though. Kind of itches it back out, and Eaglin no slouch when it comes to winning main events here in Moto Option Supercross. So he's going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe for for this heat race win with Carter and half second between him, and it stays that way. What's going to happen first? Is Eaglin going to make a little mistake, or is Carter going to actually try to go up there and make this pass? Well, we'll have to see. I don't know how aggressive Carter's going to be. I mean, this is a pretty good spot to be in for a heat race. So, I mean, you're still putting – there it is. There's a mistake, but uh... – First and second is still a pretty solid gate pick. So. Look at that. They checked each other through that rhythm section a little bit. And Eaglin, defensive line down the inside, block Carter from being able to triple in. And even though he kind of messed up the rhythm, he actually came out the better of that entirely because he's got a little bit more breathing room than he had on Carter. I think Carter's ready to blitz the whoops hard here and get right back on him, though. Yeah. Look at that. Down the inside. I even went through the tough blocks just a <laughs> little bit. They're trying to shorten this track as much as possible. Yep. Maybe they already saw where the timing gates are, so they just know they can cut yeah, right maybe. through some of those tough blocks. I would not be surprised. Oh, Eaglin changes up the line, goes inside, and I and like that, that inside's one. really, really clean. Yeah. As long you, as you can get into it clean, like, like it's fast. Yeah, hooking that rut is definitely the, the critical element of that, but the triple single down the inside, I feel like, sets you up well for being able to get into that rut clean, and right mm -hmm. now I feel like it gave Eaglin a pretty good advantage, and oh. Carter's going to go down. Case that jump dock and just looped it that's, out. That's tough to see, but uh, I mean, oh, here Ooh, comes that brought Aaron Rock. As long as we don't have him. another person come in and hit him, I think we'll we'll see everyone still getting up in a quality spot. Rockefeller is going to get up as that Hubbard right there coming by. No, it's Riley Hewen on the 70 machine. Looks like Hubbard 78 almost, but Rockefeller gets going in eighth. There's Hubbard has now moved good. into ninth, so he is back into a transfer position. We still have. Looks like about a minute and a half left to go on the clock. Rockefeller on Hewen, then Davis in six, swapping, saved it, save. but he's off the track. I'd rather be off the track than legs. That's no for sure. question about it. Gonna get on just behind Hewen now, so he goes back to seventh. Jared Gummison, quiet fifth place right here for the BPC number 77, solid effort there. Carter slipped back to fourth after that crash, so Seth Carr went by him, as did Connor Holiak and smooth sailing for Colby Eagland out front right now. Waited for that mistake out of Carter that we were talking about maybe Eagland making, and he is taking off and running with this thing, and he number one of the 450s. Yeah, he's looking great. <clears throat> so it's Eagland from Holiak, Carr, Carter, Gummison, Hewen, Davis, and Hubbard. With Frazaka now, looks like he has closed up in the 10 spot to this battle, and Davis just got passed by Hubbard. He is now on the bubble trying to get in. Well, Davis thought he did not make it in in qualifying, and now he's not going to make it out of the heat race with that off-track excursion. He's got to go get Kevin Frazaka. Alex Heckman is also trying to close the gap down right here. So Frazaka has made his way in. Is Devin Davis going to close that gap back down? Kind of hopping through the whoops a little bit. Whoa, who's down? That is, I think, Rockefeller. It is off the inside on the 88. It's going just before a freight train of guys. J.R. Reyes, Frank Jackson, Austin Partolo. 
And people are just oh giving goodness. up free spots to the main event in this, uh, this heat race. I know. It's musical positions out there <laughs> right now. Who's going to make a pass here? Oh, oh, my goodness. Frank Jackson tried to cut up the inside, and I don't know how Austin Partolo landed that, but he barrel rolled out of that. And, uh, yeah, maybe not a oh. good idea to shut the door on the inside line when someone's tripling behind you, but it happens. And Partolo able to stay on two wheels despite all that. So where are we at with the transfer battles right now? It looks like Hewitt just went down. J.R. Reyes is now in 11th. Heckman is 10th. So Seabolt on the bubble right now. Not a great spot to be in for the 10, but at least he's in. Eyes focused, trying to get back into the mix as the white flag waves for our race leader, Colby Eagland out front. That is Seabolt's teammate. Alex Heckman hopping through the whoops oh. and went down behind him. So now Seabolt has some breathing room and... Uh, not going to have a good gate pick, but at the moment at least, he's going to make the main event. That's sometimes all that matters in Moto Option Supercross. Oh, yeah, and as long as you're on that gate, you are uh, you can pretty much make anything happen from there on. Yeah, could start from the outside and still get a whole shot. It seems pretty oh. inside dominant as Seabolt slides it down and will lose a transfer spot to J.R. Reyes. Seabolt is going to case that double in. Does he get the triple clean? He does. Okay, so he's okay there. Thought we saw a rider down. Who is that down? Is that for Zach? It is. For Zach, it down. Seabolt goes by. And the positions continue to shuffle around. It's good to see JR Reyes back in this race. I don't know if he raced last weekend or not, but uh, last time I was watching him race, he was on 250s. So it's good to see him step up to a bigger class and um, put some work in. Yep, no question about it. JR Reyes looking good. Let's go back to our leader because it changed <laughs> on the last lap. It was Eagland, and now it is Braden Carter. So Eagland did something on the final lap to toss this thing away. Braden Carter takes 450 heat number one. It's Seth Carr second. Jared Gummison in third. Eagland ends up fourth. Hubbard gets all the way back to fifth. Davis is going to squeak his way into the main event in sixth. Holiak ends up seventh. Ray is eighth. And Seabolt ninth, just making the main event. Partolo misses out. Jackson, Seth Crotty for Zaka, who's top 10 in points, is going to the LCQ. Aaron Rockefeller, Anthony Pachone, Alex Heckman, Riley Hewen, Brandon Larson, Caleb Hall. Not a good night for him as he's already out of this one in the heat race. And, uh, man, That's Carter's crazy. got to stop doing this. He's got to stop doing last these last Last time we checked in with him, he was in fourth place. So. I know. He's definitely sending it. He's, he's got magic fairy dust. He just like lets the leaders just crash right in front of him on the last lap. And yeah, right. Uh, so Carter takes the dub. Seth Carr in second by the looks of it. Trying to see if we have any penalties through our top nine. Here Reyes ends up ninth. So he did actually lose a spot, but he ends up ninth. Seabolt moves to eighth. So a little better gate positioning potentially for Seabolt in that situation. And then Austin Partolo will be the first rider headed to the last chance qualifier out of this one. But it does seem like for the most part, uh, outside of maybe for Zaka in this one, our really big names have all made it through to the main event out of 450 heat number one. I feel like Anaheim one was a little weird. We saw some pretty big names out of the 450s go to the yeah. LCQ. Um, but Hubbard actually made it this time. Oh yeah, he's, he's Hubbard's in. in. That's what, that's what matters. As long as you're in there, it's, it's, I better get picked than anything you can get in the LCQ anyways. So. <laughs> well, Hubbard now has, last week he whole shot from gate, what, 19? Yeah. So this time he's got gate like 10-ish. Yeah. Better odds of getting a whole shot this week. He's trying to go for the perfect whole shot season at this rate and uh, pick up all the whole <laughs> shot awards if he can. But uh, definitely good to see Hubbard make it out of the heat race this week and not have to go through the chaos of the LCQ. And Doc, we got just one more heat race left to go. 450 Heat 2 coming up. Trying to think of the names we got in this one. Well, of course, Payson Johnson, our fastest qualifier, yep. will be there. Alexis Eclair will be in this heat race. Uh, but, man, I feel like Heat 1 was pretty stacked. Heat 1 was definitely, like, most of the top, top players were in that one. So uh, we'll see what we have happen in this one. I think it's going to be pretty, as long as Payson can stay up, it's a pretty easy win for Payson. But um, well, we'll see what happens from... Second on back. So. Okay, all right. Easy dub for Payson. We'll see uh, after not making the main event last week. Weirdo week for sure for Payson Johnson. It's not the first time we've seen some real big heavy hitters not make the main event at Anaheim 1. So Payson's not necessarily on a, a weirdo list for missing the A1 main event, but uh, we'll see if he can rebound and go right through the heat race this week. Fastest qualifier so far, looking fresh and ready to go. But 
Let's see who else we got on the line going in 450 heat number two and maybe pick out some more of Doc Smith's guys to watch <laughs> going into. I don't know if we have two. any many more. No uh, more? I think, what do we have? Chromie, maybe? So let's see. Maybe the Chrome yeah, Dog. Yeah, Chromie was Chromie in there. In here. And Tanner Rogers. Tanner Rogers. Made he made it. Awesome. T Lang, Dylan Cavaciuti, Enzo Butini. We got Noah Marchini. There's Rogers. Adam Holm rolling through the corner. He's got, uh, who else is back there? Jeremy Sciabro, uh Eduardo Simos, Ethan. Gerst in this one. Johnny Padani, Garrett Hollenbeck. There's Trevor Burns. He was down. Brayden Castellaneta. Uh, Jack know. Haley, Luke Sullivan, Matt Cromie. I think Alvin we missed Leon. out on some big names in this one, didn't we? <laughs> Ethan Parks, D Mills, and Spencer Turley. Where is Payson Johnson? Did I miss him? I don't know. Oh, there he was. I think he just missed him. Did I miss him? Donnie. Maybe that was Pradani. I didn't see Payson Johnson. Did he not I also show didn't up? I didn't see Alexis Leclerc. You what? You have the race one? What does oh, that mean? On Can the you cord. stop stop, to, stop on the cord, not on the cord, <laughs> not on the cord? You wanna go by? Ollie, do you wanna say something? Do you wanna say something in the microphone? <laughs> 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 Alright. That is the update from my daughter letting us know uh, what <laughs> Yeah. I don't know. Um yeah, I'm not seeing Either Payson or Leclerc. Which maybe is, something in maybe somebody in chat knows what's going on. Payson is not racing according to a bike malfunction, <laughs> uh, allegedly. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know, folks. Uh, Payson Johnson qualified fastest and dipped. I guess he just did it to do it. I guess he just did just it to saying, do it. I, I got this. I can still be the fastest qualifier. Um, uh, oh, it sounds like Leclerc is on vacation and didn't qualify, so no Leclerc tonight. That's just crazy. That is uh, wild. And uh, man, there is some certainly large gaps to be filled in this 450 class with no Leclerc, no Pace and Johnson. But uh, here we go. 450 heat number two is ready to drop the gates. We are off and running once again. See if Tanner can get a good start. You know he's been trying to learn um, Hubbard's start technique. So. Oh, he get pushed wide and goes oh. down. He's definitely off the bike with that flipping. So Pablo Vial Ooh. gets the whole shot. I think that was his teammate Butini oh who goodness. hit him. I don't know how Butini is still on two oh wheels and he goodness. finally gets taken down. He got clipped by like four riders before going down. So Vial, Gerst, Castellaneta at the sharp end of the field in this one. And then Padani, Ethan Parks, Jack Haley, Spencer Turley, Schiavro, Simos. Look at this absolute chaos back here as well. Adam Holm, Nico Marcini. Guys just everywhere in the mid-pack battles. Oh, oh my goodness. Barrel rolling off oh, the track, landing it. Not sure who that was. We'll have to figure that one out. Um, chaos. That's the name <laughs> yeah. of the game in this 450 heat number two. People are going everywhere. Uh, there's like 12 people leading. that need to fit into nine spots. So <coughs> we're going to see how this one ends up going. Yep. So if y'all leads, lays it down on the triple. He's got Gers second, Castellaneta in third. And Johnny Padani in fourth. That's our little foursome pulling away at the front right now. Jack Haley fifth. Spencer Turley is in a transfer spot right now, trying to jump up onto the table and off. Jeremy Schiabro back here. Luke Sullivan is off the bike on the oh, 11 man. machine. That is a tough break for Sully as he's going to lose maybe five, six spots going by now. Seven more jumping oh, over, my. and he gets oh. double legs as he gets landed on, I think, by the Chrome Dog. Yep, Matt Cromey. That's tough. So Chromie also having a tough go. This is a rough look for some of these guys back here. Trevor Burns, who is our second fastest qualifier, is well back here as well. Like we said, Sully down in the order. I think T Lang is no, he is in 13th. So T Lang <laughs> outside of a transfer as well. Man, this is not going well for some big names in this year. Yeah, right. It looks right like now. we're gonna have a pretty stacked LCQ. If, they, if things stay where they are now. Ah, I spoke too soon after that heat race. I said, oh, we got some some of the big names in out of this heat race. Things yeah, are looking right. good. Vial's making a little mistake in the race lead. Here comes Castellaneta on the 22 machine. And this four rider train is still pretty nose to tail. Wow, oh my Vial. Goodness. Big line. I don't know how he didn't go down off that tough block right yeah, the track. Good break right there. Right on the side of the object there. Yep. It's always a hit and miss sometimes when you go through those yeah, tough blocks. Right. You're just begging that the shape file doesn't hit you. <laughs> and Bial got a little bit lucky that time. Ooh. A little swap right there. 
Running a loose program out front right now is the 30, but uh, Castlenet has not been able to get up there and battle with them just yet, as I maybe expected. He might else. be just trying to stay a little bit further back, yeah. not to That's true. get it tangled up with them. You don't want someone to go down in front of you while battling them, and immediately, suddenly, you're down with them. Yeah, exactly. Up in their melee. How about Jack Haley, 2019 Moto Option Supercross champion? Not a good first round, did not make it out of the LCQ like Payson Johnson, but sitting a comfortable third right now. And similar to Seabolt, I feel the same about Jack Haley. It's just good to have Jack Haley out here and trying to compete mm -hmm. for uh, you know a position in the main event. If we could get any semblance of old Jack Haley back to maybe battle these guys, it'd be awesome. Oh yeah. So he is now settled in third place. Johnny Padani, slipping back to the four ride with Spencer Turley rounding out our top five. And uh, I feel like it's just chaos behind this. Jeremy Schiavo, sixth. Rattini, seventh. There's Ethan Parks in eighth. And Tanner Rogers is on the bubble spot. Garrett Hollenbeck, D Mills back here. That's Daniel Mills for those keeping track at home. Tanner Rogers trying to hold on. Garrett Hollenbeck wants a piece of him, and Hollenbeck is going down. Jumping over him goes T Lang. And D Mills also sneak through into that uh, 10 spot. So Tanner Rogers, well, made it. Last minute, last ditch effort of getting back onto his computer to race this one, but uh, he's had a little bit of time away from the PC, right? So oh, really? he's not maybe uh, as comfortable and ready to go as he could be tonight, right? Yeah. Yeah, we'll see uh, how he does with um, a little bit of break. And Parks just ahead of him, jumping through this rhythm section, kind of different option lines for both riders. And D Mills is kind of sneaking up into the picture, as is Tyler Lang. So it's getting a little bit nervy for Tanner Rogers on this bubble spot. I think for his sake, he just wants to go up there and pass Parks. Yeah, right. Just get a little bit more gap. Get the person between them and not really have to worry about anything. D Mills is certainly trying to close that gap down. And T Lang, we know, is no slouch either. He doesn't want to miss the main event tonight on the five. Rogers is sitting here in a position where it's it's precarious. You know you got guys behind you. You're trying to make a pass on someone in front of you. All the while, you know that any weird mistake could cost you a trip to the main event. They're even a slide out in the corners. That's two spots. Yep. I mean, heck, even just jumping off the track awkwardly could oh. cost you some time as he's going to try to make that pass stick on Parks, and he gets oh, into it. Oh, my goodness. Lays Parks down. D-Mills goes there's by. there's the two spots. T-Lane goes by. Anybody else going to make it in? Marcini oh and goodness. Rogers almost went down re-entering the track. So he takes out Ethan Parks for ninth and ends up in, what, 12th? 11th. 11th? Yep. Oh, you hate to see it. I was a, It was a good idea, but uh, with the collisions in this game, it just doesn't work. Yeah, tough break right there. Scalbro picking it up is now in ninth. So T-Lang went by him, as did Daniel Mills. He went through as well. Looks like a change to the lead has occurred. Braden Castellaneta is out front. Pablo Vial has slipped back to third. So Castellaneta on the Phil's Ski and Snowboard number 22 ride has taken over the race lead in San Francisco. It is white flag time next time by. Six minutes have come and gone. So the white flag will wave for him. Vial just went by Jack Haley who missed the rhythm section. Well, we got another Phil's Ski and Snowboard guy out front and uh, what do you got on a status report for Brandon Castellaneta? Do you do you talk much with him? Uh, he's not really in the calls that much. So, okay. uh, yeah, it's just he's just a, he's just on the team, you know. Yeah. So. Kind of keeps to himself though. And does yeah, his definitely keeps to himself. Keeps to himself. Do you know at all if he has a spotter ever? Or is he just lone wolf? Uh, uh, he's never really in the calls. Yeah. So, so maybe who knows? No he might just be he might just be playing by himself. There you go. So Castellaneta cruising and bruising by himself. For Phil's Ski and Snowboard, the 22 ride out front on this final lap. Looks like he is on his way to a dub to sweep the 450 heats for Phil's Ski and Snowboard. Um, team boss, Braden Carter, is going to be cashing checks that he uh, is going to be racking up in the bank account this year. D-Mills, T-Lang, Boutini, and Marcini round out the transfer spots, but Jeremy Schiavro is knocking on the door of opportunity, and he would like to say something about it. Come here, Nico Marcini. I would like to go by you, good sir. Oh, Marcini does not get on to the quad right there and cases the out, so Schiabro's coming. If you're Schiabro in this situation, where are you trying to size up a pass with the turns available? Oh man, I'm I'm thinking <coughs> the corner the second the second corner from the finish. So before you do the double double or the triple yep. single, I'm I'm thinking right there. 
Yep, come down the start straight and make it happen. Exactly. Brandon Castellaneta takes the win in this heat race. Great job for him, winning 450 heat number two. So can Schiavro make this happen? Two turns to go. This is the spot we were talking about. Marcini left the door open, but wasn't close enough. And going oh. down is Butini in the final corner. That is going to give the spot to Schiavro in the end as the 61 machine goes to the main. Rogers and Sullivan uh. headed to the LCQ with Butini, who is in the top 10 in points. Adam Holm to the LCQ. Garrett Hollenbeck, Ethan Gerst, Matt Cromie, another guy top 10 at the opener. Ethan Parks, who was, I believe, seventh at the opening round, is going to the LCQ. Trevor Burns, our second fastest qualifier. Yeah, there's some heavy there's hitters some going heavy to the hitters. LCQ. Oh, my gosh. Wow. All right, so let's give you a rundown of who made it out of this one. It was the 61 of Jeremy Schiavro. Nico Marcini made it, as did Tyler Lang. Daniel Mills went through in sixth with Jack Haley rounding out the top five in this one. Johnny Pagani fourth with Pablo Vial in third. Spencer Turley got all the way to the two spot in the end. Well done to him. And Braden Castellaneta sweeps the heat races for Phil Ski and Snowboard. He puts it on top along with his teammate Braden Carter. And that has set him up very nicely indeed for the main event. So heat racing action done. Stacked LCQs lined yeah. up for us, Doc, and uh, this is gonna be fun to watch. I love some LCQs. Oh yeah, battles. it's gonna be great. I mean, I'm not. I'm honestly for Spencer, <coughs> Spencer Turley getting second. I'm not really that surprised. I know he's been grinding. Every time I went to 04, it could have been two in the morning. It could have been two in the afternoon. He was in that in there. So uh, for him to get up there, it's. I guess the grind was worth it, but uh, didn't it, didn't um, didn't know how it was gonna end up. But yeah, we're just gonna see him up there. Yep, good to see Spencer Turley make it into the main event here in. San Francisco. I like that he's Spencer Turley of the Spencer Turley team. Very <laughs> simple, keeping it keeping it yeah. real. Um, but I'm Kessler about to run to the restroom for yep, a second, and you're, I'll you're, be right back. You are ready to go, good sir. We're holding you against your will in here. Um, but uh, yeah, 450 heat number two has wrapped up here in San Francisco, and we are ready to go. Last chance qualifier racing. Oh boy, this is going to be a good one. I'm trying to funnel through here and see if I missed anybody. D-Paz502 uh, subbed earlier on with the Prime sub. Thank you so much for the support, D-Paz. Um, and now Shaner708 subbed as well. So thank you again for the support. We have our graphic perpetually showing up on the broadcast and letting you guys know that uh, you have either followed or subbed or whatever. So get a little bit of shout out regardless of which. But again, big thank you guys to the, the people out there who are subbing and... Uh, Really making this possible for us to stream these week in and week out. 47 subs already. You guys have really got that sub train uh, rolling. And uh, definitely would appreciate <coughs> anybody who subs and uses those Prime subs. Helps us out get these shows on the road. Um, C. Heckman 10 also with the Prime subs. So thank you, Colton. Appreciate it. And uh, love the support. No question about it there. Ryan Norton and a couple other people were asking who's making the West tracks. I actually don't know. Uh, that's a question I should know. Let me see if I could get you a quick answer real quick here um, on who is making the West Supercross tracks this year. Hey, JVL Photo, thank you so much for the sub. Very much appreciated, good sir. Um, terrain. Let's see who's making the terrains. Yes, BAC is making the terrains for this one. So why are you gonna go are you gonna go yell at him? Is that what you're trying to do? You're asking me who's <laughs> making these terrains so you can go yell at them. Fantastic. All right. Doc is back. Yes, sir. Ready to go for some LCQs. It's getting nervous time for these guys. You're on the gate. Oh, yeah. There's only four spots. There's twenty two riders on the gate. This is the least likely opportunity you have, I feel like, of going to the main event. I feel like you go into the heat race optimistic, and then you go into the LCQ dreading it. Oh, yeah, you're dreading it the whole time because it's <laughs> literally just shooters out there. Everybody's out for the other person's neck. You could be on the same team or anything, and you're you're out there for yourself. That's it. What is your approach uh, in a last chance qualifier? Let's say you start in, like, seventh. What are you doing in an LCQ if you start seventh? Like, obviously, you want to get into fourth, but... How much uh, is it sending it versus hoping guys in front of you? No, I'm out? being really aggressive. I'm okay. going to be crazy aggressive. I'm going to make passes not to make friends. Okay. Not making friends. You're going through the field yeah. in a hurry. Sawing off front wheels. Love it. And hopefully we see some of that coming up and uh, give us some entertainment in this oh, LCQ. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, Caden Speck, Sonny Spicer, Tucker Zimmerman, Tyler McGuire, Cash Woods, <coughs> Brian Anderson, Cameron Perkins, Hayden Stevenson, Jackson Lindsay, Tyler Nichols, Evan Vanderkoy almost got the double pitch to Chesty off the Supercross triple, didn't quite get it done. Um, yeah, some good names in this one. I feel like there's some certainly very fast guys. You saw Luke Fowler almost make it out of his uh, heat race right there, Timmy Briscoe. I feel like anybody that's got a double digit in this game as well is another a guy you look at going into an LCQ of, of like, okay, yeah, that's a guy. Yeah. He can make the main event for sure, no question about it. There's a reason they have a double digit. Yeah, they scored points. <laughs> exactly. It, it may have been nationals. It may have been those long 30-minute motos instead of the stresses of a five-minute plus one lap last chance <laughs> qualifier. Joey Rico and uh, who's that Carson Bullen having a little bit oh. of a takeout war. <laughs> Just slow racing at the corner. Always good fun to see those guys messing around, but gloves are off now. I Last shot qualifier is ready to go here in San Francisco. I shot Biggie for Corkins fitting a pool of freeze on the start. So. Oh, okay. Let's so see. Let's see what happens with Corkins. Corkins, where where is he at? We got to find Corkins on the gate. That Carson Bolin? Or? Uh, I'm. It's just said Corkins. So. All right, Corkins. I don't know who that is, but he's finna pull a freeze on the start here in the 250 last chance qualifier. We're off and running. Four riders go to the main event. Oh, who's going to get to that corner first? That Cowie around the outside almost got there of Emmett's son, but Hayden Stevenson quads through the inside and comes out with the race lead. That's huge for the 12 machine to get up here early on. Luke Fowler down the inside, jumping into second place, trying to hold a position. It's like Sun jump off the track, and Fowler is going to go into second. Sun into third. No, up the inside, the 73 of Narana. I should say Narana moving into fourth now, and Tyler Nichols went by. Sun and Narana going at it for fourth, oh. and Narana's going to go off the track. Messing up the whoops is Fowler. He's going to slip back to fourth, and already we are just dicing for these positions. Look at this. Sun down the inside, squaring off goes Nichols. Sun goes defensive. Fowler up the inside, takes down. Oh, I think that was uh, <laughs> Nichols. Man, these guys are going for it. They're taking my advice, I guess. Man, saw it off front wheels, no holds barred in this 250 LCQ. Sam Weigman into the fourth and final transfer spot now. And he is just there ahead of Emmett Sund, I believe. No, that's Tucker Zimmerman now. So Sund moved up into second. Tucker Zimmerman just outside looking in. But I think Weigman wants a piece of Fowler here for the three spot. Yeah, they, it looks like they're throwing caution to the wind and uh, are just straight sending. Yep. I uh, I don't know how much I'll be doing that. I'll be trying to mitigate <laughs> a little bit more mistakes. and. Because everybody we saw in the heat races, oh, oh my goodness. Fowler gets landed making on by some mistakes. And Fowler disconnects. DCs. He's out. So he is done after being in a transfer spot and crashing. Wagman off the track in the whoops. Almost going down was Cash Woods. He's going to move to third. Wagman gets going just in front of Ben Narana in the four spot. And Narana's thinking of an inside move. Oh, ripped that corner and laid it in hard. Here comes Jackson Lindsay as well. Trying to get into the mix. Narana casing the triple. A little bit loose. Sam Weigman thinking he wants to close up on Cash Woods. It's just a constant shuffle. You just oh, never yeah. really know what's going on in these LCQs. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be crazy all the way to the end for sure. So if you're in this situation as Sam Weigman in fourth, you got a little bit of breathing room behind you. Is it just full focus on Cash Woods and no one is behind you, or what are you thinking? Yeah, we're we're mitigating mistakes here. We're we're trying to stay smooth and and uh Wait for Cash Woods to make a little bit of a mistake here so we can get on by and put a little buffer between us and not qualify. If you're Wagman, do you force the issue to go into third right here, or do you try to wait for that mistake to happen? Uh, we wait for that mistake to happen. I feel like uh, with everyone making mistakes on this track, as long as you can stay smooth, like you should be pretty pretty solid and not really have to worry too much behind you. Or I'll see there's another oh, yeah. mistake. That uh, Zimmerman, or who was that down? Was that... Oh, we can't lock onto him. It was Emmett's son. <laughs> Emmett Sun went down, so he goes from, I think he was second, and he goes all the way back to seventh. Yep. So now on the bubble spot is Ben Narana and Jackson Lindsay on that Suzuki, the 235 machine, is trying to close that gap down. So now Narana has the pressure of dealing with the bubble position here in this last Ooh. chance qualifier. And speaking of pressure, he has made a huge mistake. Ooh. Now we got side by side through the rhythm section. They both triple on and off down the inside. Goes the 235 machine of Lindsay. He is into the fourth and final transfer spot for the time being. Great move by Lindsay. We're checking up on that, on the like landing of that <coughs> table. Or that could have been really, really bad. Yeah, definitely a good move to back out of the challenge and not land on. 
Nirana, who was almost going down. So Lindsay hopping through the whoops. Nirana also hopping oh. off the track. Who's that down right I'm there? Inside. That is another. That's Cash Woods. That was Cash Woods. Okay. Oh, Cash Woods out of a transfer spot. So Nirana now into a transfer spot. And Emmett Sun, who just blew a transfer spot earlier on, is back in the fifth, knocking on the door. We have got one minute on the clock left to go. It's going to be a little bit tight next time by, but I think we're going to have two to go still next time by. Oh, Nirana goes down. Weird spot. I don't know if you had any help right there, but maybe just a front end tuck. Oh. Getting hung up behind him. Carson Bullen kind of hits him from behind. Is that a Phil's rider yeah, right Phil's, there? Phil's, yep. It's going to be Caden Speck. Oh, cuts the door down. That was smart up for Caden to do. It's just trying to have less, one less person to worry about while we're trying to move forward. I feel like the 47 of Speck right here will be a disappointment if he doesn't go to the main event right now. So we'll see his progress. Looking ahead, he's still got eyes on fourth as he jumps through this rhythm section. There's an opportunity to get around a couple guys ahead of him and maybe battle for this final transfer spot. But he's got to get going in a hurry. So our leader is checking oh, in someone down right now. Yeah, we'll check that out in a second. So Stevenson just checked in with seven seconds left on the clock, which means we do have two laps to go. So Weigman moves to second, Sun to third, and Speck just like that That's is nice. in fourth. So he goes from seventh to fourth. Oh, oh, he's up in the Davalos bales and getting teed off the track right there was Narana. He got hooked up by Jackson Lindsay, and now Narana is in the final transfer spot. Lindsay's still right there, and you got a freight train of guys behind that. That's it's crazy. This Celsius is going to be uh, down to the wire for sure. Jackson Lindsay scrubs the triple hard. Does he cut back across? Yes, he does. Inside move on to Rana. Tees him up and he goes oh. down. Cutting underneath now into the fourth and final transfer spot. Underneath it's Lindsay. Be we got guys three wide through the rhythm section. Jackson Lindsay goes down. I think that was Briscoe that hit the deck. Ryan Anderson is through and into fourth for the time being. But right behind him is Caden Speck. Everyone's making mistakes on this track. It's going to be a, a great night ever watching some racing. Oh, my gosh. Caden Speck, he is eyeing up an opportunity. Let's see if he gets a good run in the whoops right here. He is alongside. Does he make the pass stick? He does. A beautiful pass down the inside for Caden Speck. And it's about that whoop speed, Doc. These guys, if they can get on top and stay on top through the whoops, it makes a huge difference on these 250s. Yeah, I was going to say, especially on these 250s, as long as they can stay on top of these things, they're... They're going to be half a second faster easily through these whoops. Yep, so Spec is through into fourth, and the white flag is now waving. He's got a little bit of breathing room. He sees Emmett's son and a lapped rider just up the road of him. I'm not sure who that lapped rider is. A uh, Wagman down in second. He's going to pick it up still in the two spot, and Hayden Stevenson is gone at the front of the field. He is on his way to winning this last chance qualifier. As uh, we're saying goodnight to Holly. Holly came back. You know what? We're going to get a one final thought from Holly before bed. Speaking of thoughts, Hayden Stevenson is thinking about going to the main event. What do you got, Holly? Yeah, there you go. Hayden Stevenson takes the win in the 250 last chance qualifier. Good night, Holly. Sam Weigman is going to... I love you. Sam Weigman is going to bring this home in the two spot. Third for Emmett's son. And fourth place is going to be Ryan Anderson. So Speck blew it on oh, the last wow. lap. Wow. It's crazy to see. Oh my goodness. All I mean, everyone that made it in was were riders that should be in the main event. Yep. So, and even people that didn't make it in should have been in this main event. No so. question about it. So Speck misses out. Sonny Spicer, Talon, Tyler Nichols, Ben Narano, Tyler McGuire, Timmy Briscoe, Jackson Lindsay, Joey Rico, Cash Woods, Carson Bullen, Evan Vanderkoy, Tucker Zimmerman, Cameron Perkins, Jesse Furtado, Luke Fowler, all not going to the main event tonight. So Caden Speck, first man out that isn't going through. Uh, if you're Brady Carter right now, are you uh, verbally accosting Caden Speck? Uh, we shot the way some cuts. So uh, all right, all right, cuts are uh, in. did nothing. No, nope, it's the same. <laughs> Ryan Anderson goes through. And it's son Sam Wagman, Hayden Stevenson. So yeah, Braden Carter, are you accosting Caden Speck? Uh, I don't know. I think Caden's do it to himself anyway. So yeah, yeah. No one, no one feels worse than the guy that finishes fifth in the last chance qualifier every single week. We feel for you, Caden. Just missing out. But kudos to Ryan Anderson, Emmett's son Sam Wagman, and Hayden Stevenson. I feel like Hayden Stevenson was probably the biggest name in this one. Just missed out in the heat race on going through and kind of made it look like what we expect out of him in this LCQ. Yeah. So Coming from the back and making it all the way through is not not always the easiest task, but 
Yep, Hayden Stevenson getting the dub in this one. So he'll have the lucky number 19 gate selection in tonight's 250 West main event. But the lucky thing is that he's in the main event. He yeah. survived the LCQ. He did not get kicked out of this show yeah. before it You're going to have, like, what, 18th gate pick? Yeah, 19th, yeah. yeah. 19th, yeah. Oh, yes, indeedy. All right. 450 last chance qualifier coming up. And uh, we saw in that second 450 heat, Doc, there are some, there's some heat going in this 450 LCQ coming to the gate. We got a handful of guys that are already top 10 in points that are not through yet. Um, some, I, it, it, I always hate saying this, but there's like factory teams in this game and there are some factory riders on the gate in this LCQ, yeah. right? Like there's, there's the Phil's team. There's, yeah. you know, like teams like Yogi and stuff like that. District designs. When you have guys like that that end up on the gate in the LCQ, I feel like the expectation is you got to make it. Yeah, everyone's looking at you to make it because you're on a pretty solid team, right? Yeah, I just had Hubbard text me. He said, "How you like my attempted quad? I quad off second lap." <laughs> he said, "Was greasing it in quality, which is probably where that lap time's coming from." Okay, all right, greased it in quality. Um, definitely would appreciate seeing some more of that in the main events if these guys can start busting out the big yeah. boy lines. I just I think I like I told him I said huge but too risky. He said very risky. Very risky so, indeed. So there I don't go. think we'll see that much if at all in the like the main event, but uh, we might we might actually see it in this LCQ trying to make some time up. Well, what we could see in the main event that could be fun is if you got a heavy hitter, you know, like a Carter Eagle and someone like that. They're trying to make time up through the field. Maybe they start busting out the Bobby Big lines a little bit there. Yeah. So we'll keep an eye it's on that. It's definitely possible. Definitely possible. Definitely possible. Maybe even in this LCQ, these guys are, are senders, as you say. You know, they're yeah. going to go at it and uh, try to battle for some spots. And with that, they may also go for some big lines. So uh, I can definitely see some like someone like Chromie and um, having to send some of these big lines and maybe even making mistakes off of it, just trying to gain that time that they need to qualify. Yep, definitely no question about it. All right, Kevin Frazaka is in this one. Let's go through the field real quickly and see who we got. Caleb Hall, Tanner Rogers, Dylan Cappuccini, Garrett Hollenbeck, Trevor Burns, second fastest qualifier tonight, Ethan Gerst, Austin Partolo, Eduardo Simos, Aaron Rockefeller, Ethan Park, seventh at the opener, Kevin Frazaka, ninth at the opener, Enzo Butini, sixth at the opener, Alex Heckman, Anthony Pachone, Frank Jackson, Brandon Larson, Luke Sullivan on the 11. He's a guy that can win main events, and he's in this LCQ. Riley Hewen and Seth Crotty. I, I feel like Crummy this was is pretty this. stacked. I thought Chromie was in this as well, but... Oh, yeah, did not. we miss Chromie? We must have missed him. Let's see. Oh, there he is. Okay. So oh, yes, okay, yeah. Chromie, who was 10th at the opener last week. Also in this one. Yeah. This yeah, we're going to see uh, some senders for sure. <laughs> yeah. No question about it. This is going to be heavy. Only four go, people, and there are a lot more than four people in this one that are going to be really mad if they don't make the main event yeah. right now. So, we got um, people asking where Payson is. He just didn't show up for the night show tonight. Yeah, I'm not sure what the deal is. Payson Johnson, fastest qualifier. He didn't make the main event last week at Anaheim 1. Uh, showed up tonight and was fastest qualifier and then didn't decide to race, I guess. I, I, I don't know. But he's an enigma, folks. And uh, we'd love to have him out here. We'd love to see the entertainment that he continues to bring to MX Simulator Professional Racing, but uh, just not out there on the gate today. How about Frank Jackson on the 28? That's another guy that could easily sneak his way into the main event for Underground RC. I'm oh, sure. yeah. I don't he even think it's a sneak. I think he should be in main events. He's been in them consistently in the past, so we yep. should see him in the main um, as long as he can keep his head on right. Like I said, all night tonight, and he should be able to stay up and uh, be in the main. How frustrating is it for these guys? You crash in the first turn. You talk uh, about keeping your head on right, but man, you crash man, in the that, first that turn. That unscrews, that, your, your head's off your shoulders at that point. So <laughs> yeah, you're no. just go, 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 and then here comes more mistakes and more mistakes as long... That's the big thing between the the top pros and the pros that are just barely making it in. Or the, they are uh, when they make that mistake, they don't they don't continue to make mistakes. Yep, they continue going along. All right, it is go time. 450 last chance qualifier. Four spots to the main event. Everybody else goes home. Here we go. Oh, it's tight. Holm got to the corner really sharp oh, in the inside. Outside for Ethan Gerst, inside line for Tanner Rogers. He's out front. Oh yeah, D. Rog. Does he hold the it? Great quad straight into the first corner, out of the first corner, and 
made it work from there. Yeah, he did, and he's in the race lead. Ethan Gerst in second, side by side with Seth Crotty. Caleb Hall with a good start. Adam Holm is in the mix. Aaron Rockefeller, Dylan Cavacciuti, Rylan Hewen. Uh, we got. Uh, <laughs> this is a stacked LC. Dude, too. This, there's names upon names. Luke Sullivan, Trevor Burns. Oh, is that Frank Jackson? I think just went down the background, splitting the gap right there. Burnsy down the inside. Trevor did not him. care about those stuff blocks at yeah, all. Yeah, I think that was uh, Cavacciuti there on the 66. Luke Sullivan still right behind them, but this front four is where all the action is. So Rogers leads lap number one. Look at the freight train coming over the finish line. Jump behind him right now. This is anybody's last chance qualifier. Don't count out anybody in this list of riders going over the line on the end of lap number one. I'm crazy in this top five. I don't see anyone slowing anyone else up. I think it's just going to be all about not making mistakes here. Yep. Rogers. Gerst. Oh, there all goes Tanner. Rogers off the track. Yep. He go down? Yep. Oh. So Tanner Rogers down out of the race lead. And Gerst, as soon as he gets out front, goes down as well. So Caleb Hall takes over the lead. Seth Crotty second. Riley Hewen just got blocked past by Aaron Rockefeller. Is Hewen going to fight back for this three spot? No, he's going to fall into fourth. So now Burnsy outside looking in, trying to get up to Riley Hewen. He's got a freight train of guys behind him. Matt Cromey, Tanner Rogers, ninth and tenth right now for you Phil Ski and Snowboard fans at home trying to keep track of stuff. And it is all eyes on Riley Hewen in this fourth and final transfer spot. Connect visual ride, but it looks like Ooh. he is. Is he riding a Phil's bike? Gosh, no, that, Phil's looks... bike has Phil's on the side of it. I think it's just another KTM replica. Okay, you guys are throwing me off with all these replica kits. <laughs> you gotta be a little bit unique. Um, all right, so Hewen, can he figure out a way around Rockefeller? Rockefeller is all over Seth Crotty, and this is starting to tighten up. Rockefeller doesn't get the triple in, so through goes Hewen. Rockefeller is going to triple the inside and try to keep Burns behind him. Burns squares off the corner. They're side by side, and Burns gets into fourth place just like that. Great pass by Burns. Yeah, he read that situation. Well, Rockefeller went to him, and a little bit of a slide out. He doesn't fall off the bike, but he lost a lot of time. So now Burns has a bit of breathing room as Crotty is still dealing with this pressure. He went all over him. They can't quite figure out a way around the 44 machine just yet, though. Wide bike on that Very 44. wide bike. He's on a quad, pretty much. <laughs> Inside line for Hewen. This might work. Ooh. Oh, cross up and oh, they get together and Hewen goes down. Oh, he's oh. landed on. That was Sully. And then I think that was maybe Rockefeller landing on him as well. So Sullivan into the final transfer spot. Matt Cromey is outside looking in on the 39. This is definitely the time where Matt needs to, needs to send it a little bit and get some of these bigger lines and just make up some time here. Yeah, doesn't get that we preferred have option in the first position. two laps left probably. 320s on the clock right now, so yeah, maybe three to go. Oh, he's closing up though. Oh Under yeah. Pressure on Sullivan. I mean, Chromie's no slouch, but neither is Luke. Like this is yeah, a pretty no, heavy hitter battle. Is, yeah, this is not an easy LCQ to make. Chromie is looking for an opportunity to get around the 11. I feel like Sullivan is just like, please get me up to the lead battle. I don't want to be in this bubble <laughs> position. Romy not going to go to the inside. Where is he thinking about a pass if he's going to try one, though? That is the question that these guys are trying to figure out in these final few laps of the 450 last chance qualifier. Yeah, if, I, if I'm Chromie, I'm not making a pass into the last lap, honestly. Yep. Just it's because everyone's going so fast. They're not losing any time to the people behind them. And uh, making a pass early could mean that a pass back comes even easier for, for um, oh, my goodness. For People Sullivan, yeah. Yeah, for Sullivan. Yep. Well, they are starting to catch up to that group. It is still Trevor Burns in th uh, the three spot. Seth Crotty in second, still riding that wide bike. Caleb Hall has not gotten away with the lead very much. So this little five-rider pack at the front could go any which way in these final couple of laps. So let's see. Time-wise on the clock, we are going to have two to go because Caleb Hall is coming to the line. And it looks like he's going to cross with about... Maybe 12 seconds left on the clock still. Yep, 4.48 on the clock. So two to go. Burnsy up into second. Seth Crotty back to third. And here comes Sullivan and Cromie trying to close up on Seth Crotty. It almost seems like they're maybe trying to work together to get to this group because they haven't really... Cromie hasn't thrown a dive bomb anywhere just yet. He's playing it safe, and he's following Sullivan through here. Sully goes for the quad on. Off, and off the track, and down! Oh, Luke Sullivan hits the deck. That's exactly what Chromie was looking for. 
And Chromie goes through. He's going to try to get Crotty as well. But Crotty continues to ride very defensively and hold off Matt Chromie for the three spots. So it's Hall, Burns, Crotty, Chromie. One, two, three, four. Behind that, Anthony Pachone, Kevin Frazaka, and then Sully picked it up in seventh. I feel like Sully is about to throw absolute caution of the wind to try to get back into a position. Oh, yeah, here. he has nothing to lose and everything to gain. Yep. So let's see what happens here. White flag is waving. Our race leader has just checked in out front. And Sullivan, let's see, does he go inside right here? Nope, still sticking to the outside. But he is, you could tell the, the body like, language the and everything. aggression out of his body language is crazy. Did a 103.7 with a fall off crash. That should show you how fast he's going right now. That's how everybody's going. Yep. So he's going to try to get around for Zaka and Pachon. That only gets him to fifth. Oh, we got Crotty down with Chromie, and they're both sideways in the track. And cutting across, Sullivan is now side by side with Verzaka. Going into third is Pachon, and now Chromie settles into fourth, just ahead of Verzaka. Sullivan is still right there in sixth as well. Chromie's trying to deadly. hold on. Who's going to get this spot into the whoops? We go just a few corners left. Chromie swapping, exits the whoops at high speed, Absolutely tucks the front end. It. The inside line goes Whoa. down the inside. Sullivan and goes down in the sand, trying to get up the inside. <laughs> no way. And Chromie survives the chaos. Unbelievable finish. Caleb Hall wins. Burns oh second. Oh my goodness. Pachone third. And Matt Cromie makes the main event tonight in fourth. Wow. Crotty Rogers for Zach and wow. Ewan. Luke Sullivan looped out as he was trying to go for that final transfer spot. That's crazy. Wow. That was that was an insane race all the way to the end. Oh my goodness. Do you think Sully just got too ahead of himself? Like he just <sighs> He made that pass stick into fifth and then just, ah. Oh. Well, they slowed down so much coming into that sand and that sand has so much grip comparative to where they were going on that flat corner that I imagine he just gave it a handful and pulled a wheelie and endowed off of that. Yeah, yeah, I guess, right? Just kind of like a little normally panic they're or something. Yeah. Normally they're carrying so much more speed in that corner that when they're on the grass hard, it's not really grabbing that much traction to give it a wheelie. That's true, that's true, yeah, so. Caught him off guard a little bit and sends him home early tonight. Caleb Hall takes the dub in this one. Trevor Burns, Anthony Pachone, Matt Cromey going to the main event out of this 450 last chance qualifier. Seth Crotty, Tanner Rogers, Kevin Frazaka, Riley Hewen, Luke Sullivan, Alex Heckman, Ethan Parks, Dylan Cavaciuti, Garrett Hollenbeck, Enzo Butini, Frank Jackson, Austin Bear, Aaron Rockefeller, Ethan Gerst, Brandon Larson, and Adam Holm along with Austin Partolo and Eduardo Simos. Going home early here tonight in San Francisco. Man, big names missing out, but uh, that's why we drop the gate every week. You oh, never yeah. quite know what's going to happen in Moto Option Supercross. Oh, well, that was fun. That gave us a little bit of a rise there at the end. And Sully, unfortunately, throws it away. Oh, look at that line. Oh, my gosh. Quad on, off, and then what? Triple, double? I have no clue. I have no clue what you would do after that. Big boy lines being pulled Big out. Big boy lines. I mean, we don't expect anything less from Trevor Burns. Yeah. All right. 250 main event is uh, coming up. And we will get our timing display set up for you guys as well so that we can see how much time is left in these races. Oh, boy, folks. Strap in. It's round two of Moto Option Supercross. Oh, look at Doc. He's getting set up. He's putting his feet up. He's hanging out oh, for yeah. a while. Are you having fun tonight? I'm having a blast. I'm oh, stoked to be here. Yeah, this is awesome. Good to have you in studio and uh, ready to call some main event action. This is where the points are paid. This is why yeah. we come to see the racing here in Moto Option Supercross. And uh, round two of 250 West coming up next. Um, the obvious storyline coming in is can Seth Shirley keep it going? Is it going to yeah, be two I for mean, two for the one dub? I think he can. Um, it's just, it's all, I honestly think this track is very start based. Okay. Especially for the top top runners, it's very yep. start based. So uh, we'll see that in both 250 and 450 class, I believe. So, uh, but I mean, everyone everyone in that top three is all good enough to win. So, yeah. if it is as start based as you're saying, then do you think if we see a situation like last week where obviously Carter was down early, Leclerc was buried early, I don't think they're those coming guys back aren't going to gonna win. win if they. Yeah. Are I, don't, down. I don't think they're coming back for a win. I think they can come back to the top five. Okay, all right, but. Uh, I think it's just, as you saw in these these heat races and LCQs, when you get that start, you almost immediately, because you're hitting that rhythm, have a three-second. Yep, yep, exactly, exactly. So, 
<clears throat> Very start based. All right, let's go through the order real quick. Race Cobble, Sam Weigman, Braden Tharp, Austin Schaefer, Evan Holt, Lucas Brune, Alec Horn, Holden Coat, Tyler Blowers, Tyler Showy, Maverick Schneider, Manuel Cepeda, Cooper Hunt, Emmett's son, Tanner Thorson, Hayden Stevenson, Ryan Anderson, Ryan Pinkerton, John Heilman, Seth Shirley, and Steve Bonnell. All right, do you have a whole shot pick lined up brought to you by the oh. Design Lab Code tonight, Doc Smith? I don't know. I really don't know. I don't know enough of these 250 guys to, to really, uh, um, they, I mean, I'd, I'd love to see like John or I think Alex in this. So I'd love to see either one of them make it a, get a good start. But um, yeah, we'll, we'll just, we'll go with Alec. Go with the teammate. All right. He's going Alec Horn, the Design Lab whole shot here tonight. Doc Smith has his pick in and shout out to the Design Lab Co., Head over to the designlabco.com and check out their graphics and decals and put them on your machine. All right, folks, let's get it started here tonight. 250 main event is lined up in San Francisco. Seth Shirley leads the field in. Will he lead the field out? Here we go. 250 main event in the Bay Area. Off the start, Shirley's got a good one. He's trying to control it to the inside. The one dub of Seth Shirley picks up the Design Lab Co. Whole shit. He's out front and he is off and running. Can Seth Shirley run away with this one? Doc Smith. Yeah, I think he's, uh, like I said earlier, I think he's very start based. So he's he's definitely started it off right. Yeah, gets out front and gets clean air. Evan Holt, second last week in Anaheim, starting out right behind him. So our two heavy hitters from the opener are mixing it up and ready to go. Holtz, he's gonna follow in with Seth Shirley and try to go with him. We got a guy going down Ooh. and it's causing some chaos in the whoops. It was John Heilman who was battling for fourth early That's in this tough. one. Took a couple guys with him. I think that may be our heat winner, Austin Schaefer, who was down, it is. So Schaefer went down in the whoops. He was the winner of our second heat race on the night. And that is a tough blow for him because he had a good start and now he is down in the field on this one. So early on, it is Shirley from Holt. We also have Alec Horn with a good start on the 27. What are you looking for early out of these two, though, up front here, Doc? Man, I uh, I think I think Shirley's just going to be, as long as he can keep his mistakes down, he's he's got this. All right. And if someone is just overly aggressive with him and, and, and intentionally targets him, I think it's, it's up to Shirley to lose this race. All right, so Seth Shirley trying to settle in with this race lead. Evan Holt putting on the pressure. And Alec Horn dealing with a, another rider behind him. It's Tyler Showy moving into a position to battle for uh, the third spot right here. And that is on the Spencer Turley team. So Tyler Showy, along with Spencer Turley, making the main events tonight here in San Francisco for the Spencer Turley team. Good to see those guys put in an effort. Oh, this battle for the lead is on. Evan Holt is all over Seth Turley. Both of them still going to that outside line. I feel like Holtie looks kind of spicy, man. I feel yeah, like we got really a battle. Good. I mean, I think the battle is going to be here as long as, but I just, I think both people, the both of them respect each other enough not to make any dirty passes and try to make it as clean as possible and have a good race. Yeah, if you're Holtzy here, how long do you just kind of funnel in versus maybe pick a spot to make a pass, or do you just follow this early on in the race? I mean, we're so early into this race that uh, it, it's not going to hurt anything to really follow here, see his lines, see where, see where he's changing his lines if he is, and um, learn from all that before trying to make a pass. All right, so he's going to seek out an opportunity for later in the race and hopefully not lose his opportunity because of a mistake. So he's going to funnel in here behind Seth Shirley. Shirley opening up a small gap. I actually had a little bit of a swap there in the sand, but uh, kept it underneath him. They are getting away from Tyler Showy. He's moved up into the three spot, and Alec Horn slips back to fourth. Braden Tharp, who was our fastest qualifier, has now found his way into fifth, and he is trying to get into the mix to battle for a podium. Aiden Stevenson, fresh out of the LCQ, Maybe a little bit more track time for Stevenson helping them out, kind of seeing how the lines develop. Obviously dominated the LCQ, but um, never want to go to the LCQ, but that is one thing that you can maybe take away from it is a little bit more track prep, right? Yeah. I mean, my dad tells me that every weekend. He's like, if you make the main event, you got a little bit extra time on the track. So uh, it, def it definitely can help, but it also, it, you don't get much time. Yeah. Um, I know it's not as much here as it is IRL, just having a little bit more finger pump, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I mean, the extra time on the track, granted the people that aren't even racing LCQ can just go ride the track while they're waiting. Yep, yep, so, exactly. So I don't know how much it really help, but in that race situation, it might it might be, it might be beneficial. Looks like we have maybe lost Holtzy out of the two spot. He has slipped back to third. 
maybe not a crash, only seven seconds back. Tyler Shoei does go into uh, the two spot now, so it's Shirley from Shoei, and then Holt with Alec Horn and Tharp rounding out our top five. Tharp up the inside, tries to get this inside line to stick. Dooley's over the finish line jump. Outside to in. Oh, oh wow. Covered nicely by Horn. Yeah, Alex think, trying to keep it easier on himself out here, I guess. I think Tharp really thought Horn was just going to rail the berm, and, Th and Horn expected what Tharp was going to do. Yeah. He, he squared that corner off, and Horn cut the corner tight and made sure Tharp didn't have a drive. Smart. Smart. Very smart move. So Horn keeps it upright on two wheels. Now holtzy has got to try to put his head down and close up to Tyler Shoei, who's having a really strong ride right now in the two spot we're coming up on the first third of this race being complete and Shoei's kind of hopping his way through the whoops on the 406 machine Shirley now has clean air and a six second lead to deal with out front and a long time before he's going to get to some lapped riders let's find some more battles i just saw a pass being made tharp just went down the inside of thorson so he picked it up in ninth and moved into eighth now john heilman is seventh on race cobble for sixth Holtzley slips back to fifth now behind stevenson and then Horn now into a podium spot. So here's a good battle right now for fourth. Holtzy looked a little feisty early on, but I think this, the mistakes are starting to bite him a little bit. Yeah, just, just a little bit. And um, I think it's just also the pay. He may have lost a little bit of the pace, just losing a little focus off, off the, after the first couple laps. Yeah, just trying to settle in and find a groove at this point in time. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you make that mistake, it turns into a second mistake, and then life is coming at you fast. You're outside exactly. the top five before long. So just got to regroup. He's okay. He's in a good spot still. Alec Horn now putting his eyes fully focused on Tyler Shoei for this two spot. And Horn, lap time wise, 58 2, 58 1 for Shoei. Up front, Shirley's in the 57, so 57 6 for him. So just kind of slowly inching away at the front, not really putting a huge, huge gap on the rest of the field just yet. But get to that 10 second mark and feel comfortable about it. Oh, Horn is oh, down over up. the berm. Weird spot to go down. I can't really envision how he would end up going. He must have just pushed front over and it just carried guess, him over. Yeah. So he loses, I think, three spots. Tharp went by, Cobble through, and Holtzy went back by <laughs> into third. Yeah, I know that crash all too well. I do that way too well. <laughs> I feel that. Just, feel the, just that. the front end. That's it. Oh. Yep crash any other way it's just pushing front in over the corner when well, you go to the top of that berm and you feel like you see exactly where that top is and the front's mm -hmm. like no 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 here's where the top actually is in the berm and then you fly over the top holtzy a mistake right there gonna go through the tough blocks but still hold on to third here's a good battle for fourth brewing it's race cobble and Braden tharp tharp scrubbing down the triple trying to make a pass on cobble as we head into the whoops holtzy hopping a little bit tharp gets into cobble and cobble goes down tharp Ends up completely stopped on him, but I don't know how Tharp didn't end up going down right there because he absolutely hit the back of him. Now back down the inside of Tanner Thorson. Tharp is going to go by him. So the battles continue regardless of where Tharp is on the track. He's finding himself in one. Horn went back through into fourth in that chaos as well. And Tharp has now just made it back by Thorson to make that pass stick as well. So these guys, they're all just jockeying for a position as we reach the halfway point of this one. Uh, you're just trying to get into the top five, but it seems like it's pretty tough to settle into a pace when you're in this kind of chaos. Yeah, I don't know. I think once you get in that top five, then I think pace might actually be a little slower and make it, make you make more mistakes than you were riding before you made into that top, top five area. So. Oh, Tharp jumped off the track trying to go around Horn, and getting by both of them was Tanner Thorson. Oh, Horn tried to shut the door and get back by him, Ooh. and these guys are crossing up in the air. It is tight. Orders in this battle. Oh, Thorson oh, goes down goodness. and he brings both uh, and Tharp didn't legs and Horn with him and did not legs. So Hayden Stevenson gets three spots for the price of one to go into fourth. He will take that Christmas present all day long <laughs> as he moves up into fourth. So let's give you guys a quick rundown through the field. We are at the halfway point of this one. And you know what? Because they let you come in studio tonight, this uh, rundown through the field is brought to you by Smith Pro Rodeos. Getting Doc Smith in the <laughs> studio for, with us here tonight. So shout out to Main them. Street. Uh, Seth Shirley leading this one here in San Francisco halfway through. Tyler Shoei second. Evan Holt is down in third. Will he get up in third? No. Hayden Stevenson is going to go by into that spot. So Hayden Stevenson uh, now in third. You got Tanner Thorson now moving to fourth around Evan Holt who has slipped back to fifth. John Heilman sixth. Steve Bonnell in seventh. Maybe getting past right now down the inside. Tharp Trying to get up the inside double quad. Is he going to get that pass? Yeah, yeah he's going to get a twofer because Tanner Thorson was down. So we're watching passes be made as we're going through this rundown right now. Tharp 
goes up to sixth. You got Bonnell seventh, Pinkerton eighth, Thorson now in ninth, and Race Cobble rounding out our top ten. Then Lucas Brun eleventh, Alec Horn, uh, Schaefer, Anderson, and Weigman inside the top fifteen. Uh, Anderson just ahead of Weigman there. Emmett Sun sixteenth, Holden Coat seventeenth, Maverick Snyder is in eighteenth, Cooper Hunt nineteenth, Emmanuel Cepeda twentieth, Tyler Blowers twenty first, and that is everybody in tonight's main event. Shout out to Smith Pro Rodeos. Yeah. Bringing Doc Smith to you in the studio here tonight. Bringing me to West Coast in general. So. Yeah. You guys want to check out Doc Smith? Doc Smith underscore 464? It's just Doc Smith 464 Doc Smith, on Instagram. Doc Smith 464 on Instagram. Out here racing 250 Supercross West. You can check him out sloshing around in the mud of San Francisco this uh, weekend. He's very excited for that. He's got I'm fresh so gear. stoked. Fresh gear ready to absolutely to destroy. destroy it. <laughs> I'm, I'm already like I'm prepaying for the washing machine on on Sunday. <laughs> oh man, how about yeah. Tyler Showy? I don't know anything about him. I guess he is friends with Spencer Turley and putting it up in second place oh, in the main event good. right now. What a he's ride! He's being super consistent. Yeah. Um, yeah Do you I know mean, anything about him? I have no clue. I don't know the name. So there you go. So Tyler Showy showing up. And making things happen here in San Francisco, just consistent riding, like you said, is hitting all his marks. And uh, the only guy right now, really, that has a chance of upsetting yeah, Seth Shirley's eight seconds behind. back-to-back wins to start the season. So if Shirley has some weirdo mistake, we would have about the weirdest winner we could have, I feel like, here tonight in Tyler Shoei as we come down into the final five minutes of this one. 4.30 left on the clock, plus a lap, of course, at the end of it. Seth Surly still cruising out front. So Stevenson third, Holtzy now into the fourth spot, and Heilman rounding out the top five. It's been an up and down night for John Heilman, but I feel yeah. like a fifth is going to be a pretty solid result if he can stay here. Yeah, I definitely think if he can stay up here, he uh, he should be pretty happy with this after the night he's had. So. Yeah, you you have an up and down heat race. You make it in, then you go down in the main event. You end up inside the top ten. Now you're fifth. I feel like you just exhale at the end of the night and say wow i can't believe i walked out of here with the top five if he stays there ryan pinkerton is still pretty close alec horn tanner thorson in a nice little battle right here just outside of the top five they are in seventh and eighth respectively and then behind that lucas brun and sam weigman are also in a nice little battle so thorson closing up on alec horn uh, as you mentioned alec horn you're a bit familiar with him uh, how is he when he gets to this stage of the main event you got a little bit of time left on the clock you're still in a battle is he pretty good about settling down at the later stages? Man, I've seen a little bit of both. I've seen him settle down and and just bring it all in. And I've also seen the other side of it where he's been pretty aggressive continuously and then make a mistake and, and lose some spots because of it. So I don't know what Alec we're going to see tonight, but uh, either way it's going to be pretty entertaining. All right, so he's made it all the way up into six now. He's on Holtzy trying to get into the top five in the later stages of this one. A little bit of a... Kind of a swap at the end of the whoops right there. Almost caught him out, but he is holding on to six just fine. He's got Ryan Pinkerton still knocking on the door of opportunity just behind him. And then Holtzy, like we said, just up the road. So John Heilman has now moved up into fourth. He's just continuing to pick off the positions as they come to him. Doesn't look like he's going to get to Hayden Stevenson, who is up in third. But how about this for Hayden Stevenson? Went to the LCQ, didn't really make much of a fuss about it, and makes it into the main event. And... LCQ to podium has got to feel really good after oh, a night yeah. that kind of went really bad. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, LCQs are always just roll the dice and and a lot of RNG in this game, especially. Like, it just it, in this game, it's just a lot of RNG based. So, um, yeah, you should just be happy to be in the main first and then being in a podium position is just the best thing possible. Yep, so right now cruising in third and trying to bring this thing home. Quick shout out to Wicked Heart with the sub. Appreciate the support and hope you're enjoying the stream as we have only got a few minutes left of the second round of 250 West in Moto Option Supercross. Seth Shirley now into lappers. This is where the problem area could come as he kind of offsets through that rhythm section, trying to work his way around Steve Bonnell, I believe that is, on the 65 machine. Uh, Shirley doesn't have too much left in his way to try to win this main event, but the lappers could wreak havoc here. Ooh. Look at that. Bonnell goes back by. How's that feel? You're you're leading the race, and then you have a lapper go back by. You. I, I I get mad when that I'm, happens. I'm upset for sure. Yeah. Um, coming from a lap a lapper, I would I would never. I'm gonna check up to let. I mean, I know I'm in a battle too, but the the leader needs to be the priority in that. Yeah, Bonnell got back by him and really isn't 
making too much of an effort to let him go back by at this point. It's no, like, he's not really holding him up too crazy anyways. I mean, yeah. he, like, Seth has a huge gap, so if I'm Seth, I'm, I'm going to probably be a little upset, but not really let him affect, uh, affect me too much because um, there's no one right on my butt. So. Yeah. Well, speaking of gap, they got massive uh, while we were talking about him because Showy went down. Oh. Aiden Stevenson has moved into second, and he's 20 seconds off of uh, Seth Shirley out front That's in the crazy. lead. That's crazy. So now Showy... Got to try to regroup here and battle Stevenson to get into this two spot. Or will he be able to retain this podium? How about Ryan Pickerton all the way up to fourth now as well? Got around Heilman. So uh, the Yogi boy is showing through. But, uh-oh, here comes Shoei. He wants a piece of this second position down the inside. He's going to make the pass, squaring off as Stevenson. They're going to go side by side. Dooley's kind of into the triple. <laughs> Stevenson didn't really toss as much as we wanted him to. Down the inside, though, Stevenson in the whoops trying to get it back. No, Showy shuts the door. Tyler Showy back in the second place. Man, this dude's riding really good. We yeah, have no clue ripping. who he is, but he's doing great. Oh, Stevenson laid it into that corner. He's trying his hardest to get back by Tyler Showy in the second place, but uh, Showy's actually kind of running away with it a little bit. Let's see if Stevenson has an inside move after the finish here. Thought about it, but funnels back in. Oh, this is great. Oh, Filthy that was scrub huge for Tyler Shelley. <laughs> Absolutely huge. I like these guys are checking up. They're doing a different option through here now, just playing it a little bit safer. Time has expired, so White Flag will come out next time by for our race leader, Seth Shirley. But the battle for second is on. Tyler Shelley showing up out of nowhere. Oh, Sounds mistake. like he's been grinding in Elsinore is what people are saying. And uh, he is in second right now trying to hold on, but Stevenson is going for it. <clears throat> the grind has paid off. Stevenson hopping through the whoops. Showy, a little bit cleaner. That seems to be like where Stevenson is losing his time more often than anything is, is through those whoops. Tyler Showy is getting through him clean. And Stevenson lost even a little bit more time in the sand right there. I think he's trying to be a little bit more timid in him. Stevenson's feeling a little bit more timid in those whoops, and it's, it's costing him big. All right, white flag is out. Tyler Showy has a bit of a gap now on Hayden Stevenson for second. So it looks like barring... Any big mistake on this last lap, it is going to be a two uh, position here for Tyler Showy on debut, I think. I don't, I've never seen him race before, so that'd be huge. Look at the lappers that Seth Shirley's dealing with yeah. everywhere, but uh, going to bring this thing home. Two more corners left to go, and talking about perfect season, he got out front in this one and made it look like a perfect night in San Francisco. Seth Shirley takes the 250 main event in San Francisco. And dies. Backflip <laughs> to death. Showy down in the whoops on the oh. last lap, and Stevenson hits him, but does it go down? Oh, brutal end to a battle for second. But Tyler Showy will still end up on the podium by the looks of it. Stevenson from the LCQ is going to pick up a second place tonight, and that is going to be a huge dub for him. He's going to be stoked, I'm sure, on that. As he crosses the line, and Tyler Showy from Elsinore oh. 03 to P3 in San Francisco <laughs> gets it on the box for Spencer Turley team. Love to see it. Ryan Pinkerton ends up fourth, and John Heilman, your boy, rounds, rounds out, out the top, top five. five. That was a great race all the way up to the end. Oh, yeah. Good battles, and great to see a fresh face on the podium here in Moto Option Supercross. Alec Horn, oh, Tharp tried to get Lucas Bruin in the last corner and just couldn't get the rear end traction down. So <sighs> Bruin ends up seventh. Tharp ends up in eighth. Race Cobble ninth. And rounding out our top 10, last guy on the lead lap is Sam Weigman. Steve Bonnell, Holden Coat. Evan Holt ends up 13th. Cepeda, Schaefer, Snyder, Sund, Anderson, Thorson, Blowers, Hunt. And it looks like only 21 guys started this one. We'll wait for those penalties to come in. Let's see if they changed anything around. All good there. Uh, oh, looks like... No, oh, that was all fine as well. Maybe a little bit of shuffling around deeper down the field. It kind of mixed up outside of the top 10. Well, there's your winner right there, folks. SX on Twitch this year, but that's okay. Seth Shirley taking the dub for JIBR.co. Two for two, Doc. Two oh, for yeah. two. We'll see if we can make it happen. I just I just don't know about having this RNG in this game like you do. Yeah, I know. It's a, it's a long season, but he's made it two rounds in and two wins as well. And uh, 
I mean, already because Evan Holt follows up a second place finish last week with a 13th this week, and then behind that, big gap. anybody's guess what's going on. He's got a huge points lead. So championship-wise, you already kind of feel like he can settle in a little bit. You he know? can definitely settle in on that aspect, so he's not really having to push to be up front. Um, and then also, you can tell these lappers aren't very respectful. Yeah, they're so. definitely giving him a little bit of a tough time. So that's something to keep an eye on mm-hmm. moving into the later rounds. Well, we've made it to the coup de gras. It's 4.50 main event time in San Francisco. Doc Smith, Braden uh, Carter wins the opening round last week. Does he win tonight in San Francisco? Uh, I really, I'm pulling for him. He's my buddy. He does a lot for me. And and uh, yeah, I think, he, I think he'll do great. Let's just see if he can get off the freaking line halfway decent. Top ten start, does he win? Top ten start, I could see, I could definitely see him winning with a top ten start. Okay. So. Now that being said, Hubbard's an insanely good starter. Yep. If he gets a whole shot, I could see Hubbard being up there, and if not, even winning the night. Yep. 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 Um, he makes a lot of mistakes in the whoops normally, just from what I've seen with Hubbard, and maybe I'm wrong, but that's just what I kind of see. So only having one set really calls to his riding style. Yeah. Well, Hubbard still only has the one win to his name, mm-hmm. right? Denver in 2000. Well, don't call me. Don't don't ask me on that. I don't know that much. I think it's still just the one. I think he only won Denver in 2022 or one. Uh, gosh, I think it must have been 2022. But um, yeah, we will see if Hubbard can make it happen. We know he's going to probably get a good start. We'll see if he can control it through the first corner. Um, I'm kind of excited to see the other guys. I'm sorry. I'm excited to see if Seabolt can rebound from losing that main event last week and, and, and have a good one. Colby Eaglin won his heat race tonight. He looked really strong. I think he also, uh, factors in as well. So I'm kind of interested to see if the guys that didn't get it done at Anaheim won the way that Carter did. Yeah. I mean, there's five find people, ways tonight. There's five people that could win tonight easily. Yep. And there's 10 people that could win with some luck. Absolutely. So, I mean, it's it's all up into how how we finish out the night. All right, let's Thank give you guys a rundown real quick right here. Caleb Hall, Tyler Lang, Jeremy Schiavo, Trevor Burns, Nico Martini, Devin Davis, Seth Carr, Jack Haley, Spencer Turley, Jared Gummison, Daniel Mills, Connor Holiak, J.R. Reyes, Colby Eaglin, Jeremy Seabolt, Matt Cromie, Jacob Hubbard, Anthony Pachone, Braden Castellaneta, Johnny Padani, Braden Carter going to the line tonight. Whole shot pick, Doc Smith, brought to you by the Design ah. Lab Co. Got, got to go with Hubbard. All right, he's Got going to. Hubbard. That's really That's, tough to bet against. I, I know. I don't want to bet against that necessarily, but I'm going to try to find somebody else. Let's see. Um, I'm going to go Trevor Burns. I can see Trevor getting a pretty good spot. All right, Trevor Burns is my pick. You got Jacob Hubbard for the whole shot, all brought to you by the Design Lab Co. Visit the designlabco.com. Check out their fresh set of graphics. And, uh, yeah, purchase some, please, folks. Head over there and figure it out because... They support us, and we love that they have come on board to support us. Um, Nick Porter runs that program over there. Former pro sim racer. Definitely got after it for quite a while back in the day, so I'm sure some of you guys remember that name. NorCal guy, and uh, great to see what he's put together with the Design Lab Co., and they're bringing you guys the whole shot tonight here in the 450 main event from San Francisco. All right, folks, it is time to go racing for round two of Moto Option Supercross in MX Simulator. Who do we watch on the start? Of course, Hubbard's probably going to get a good one. T-Lang is lined up alongside the box. It's time to go racing round two in San Francisco. Here we go. Hubbard, great start. Going to control it to the inside line. Jacob Hubbard rips the whole shot brought to you by the Design Lab. And he's out front leading this thing. Colby Eaglin with a good start. J.R. Reyes is up front. Uh, not seeing the red plate of the one machine of Braden Carter out front right now as Hubbard leads on the first lap. Yeah, it's tough to see that red plate not up front, but uh, we'll see what he can come back to. I mean, we do, I was just talking about how it's going to be tough to come back through, so maybe he can make me eat my words. Well, Hubbard off to a good start in this one. Jeremy Siebel 20th on the first lap. That's a tough break. The man who finished second last week in Anaheim 1. We'll see how he gets through the field like Carter did last week to win the main event. So it's Hubbard, Eaglin, J.R. Reyes up front, Pablo Vial in the four spot, and Nico Marchini rounding out the top five at the end of lap number one. As they cross the line, it's Carter in seventh at the end of this one. Castellaneta eighth, Jack Haley in ninth, and rounding out our top ten is Caleb Hall. Hubbard is head down trying to pull away from Eaglin in this one, and he's just trying to hit his marks and get away at the front of the field. Does he make it to lap six? 
I'm, I'm hoping he makes it past lap six. We should be in the clear after that. All right. But uh, I'm, I, it looks like he's feeling pretty good being back on his own setup. So. Yep. He is uh, cruising early in this one. Colby Eaglin is trying to keep the pressure applied. Trevor Burns also with a bad start, so that was a terrible pick by me. We got some <laughs> hopping through the whoops. Eaglin losing a little bit of ground and then gaining it back with a smooth inside line right there through the sand. Let's go back and see where the one machine is. He's down the inside on the 77, and he's made that pass on Jared Gummison into, I believe, fifth spot now for Carter. So definitely much higher up than he was at the start of the main event at Anaheim last week. But he's got his teammate out front trying to pull away, and also Colby Eaglin in second, no slouch. I feel like this is going to be a bit tough for Carter to get into the lead if those guys stay where they are. Oh, yeah, I mean... And Carter, like last week, we had a lot to uh, to go towards him. He's insane in the whoops normally. So, so, like last week, we had two sets to gain on on others. And then this week, we only have one. Now, a little harder, but we'll just Ooh. see how that plays out. Jumped off the track, landed on the tough block right there. Just kind of made a right. Going to get passed back by Gummison, and the Gummison gets stuck in the bales there. So, <laughs> back through he went, and Marcini is going to be the next guy that Carter tries to figure out a way by. Vial... Kind of closing up on this little lead battle, and Eaglin is all over Hubbard for the lead. I feel like Eaglin probably has somebody telling him where Carter is, letting him know, hey, man, yeah. he's in fifth. He's starting to come through the field a little bit. And I feel like if you're Eaglin and you, you think you have the speed to win tonight, you got to make a quick pass on Hubbard and go. Oh, yeah, for sure. It also seems like he's being a little nice. I've seen him them coming in some corners pretty close together, and Eaglin just cut him behind him instead of cut under him or hit him or anything. So. Yep. Good to see clean racing. Yep, so far so good at the front of the field. Three minutes down, 17 minutes, and a lap to go in this one. Eaglin with a little brake tappers as he quads through. Triple single to the inside in this turning rhythm section. Man, how about Pablo Vial kind of sneaking into the picture in the background too? Don't count him out as these two kind of battle with each other. Vial is just lurking back there, hoping an opportunity presents itself. Hubbard going to go a little deep in the whoops. And Eaglin's going to swoop this outside. Let's see if he can set up a pass into this corner. Not quite close enough, but Vial is suddenly right there knocking on the door. Eaglin might force a pass here soon because this is getting tight at the front. Yeah, I, I think, unfortunately, I think that Hubbard's holding up Eaglin a little bit and uh, letting Vial catch up to them. So um, we're going to see how aggressive it gets here in a minute and, and if it's going to be between Eaglin and Vial or if it's going to be between... Hubbard and Eagland. Well, Carter is now into fourth. He is only four seconds off of this lead battle. Vial is putting the pressure on. He's going to quad into the corner behind these guys. I like that those lines work out pretty evenly. They're very, kind of very, decide. very even. Yeah, whatever you're more comfortable doing is what you can do, and, and they work out pretty similarly. Hubbard has a tiny bit of breathing room now because I feel like Eagland is starting to ride maybe a tad defensive with Vial right behind him. But maybe Eagland's just trying to regroup and put his head down and put a charge back up to Hubbard in this battle for the lead. It is tight quarters at the front here in San Francisco. Still a lot of racing left, but it's Hubbard, Eagland, Vial, and then a gap back to Braden Carter, our champ there in the four spot. This is great action, Doc, as these guys continue oh, to shuffle yeah. spots. I'd love to see some lap times here coming up soon with, with uh, after this lap with Carter having a clean track and seeing what he's doing compared to the top three ahead of him. Wow, 57.6, not gaining time that time on our group up here. 57 yep. flat, 57.1, 57.4 for the lead trio. I think Eaglin's realized it's time, though, man. Like, he is oh, trying yeah. to figure something out as a way to make a pass on Hubbard. But again, if you force the issue and you slow both of yourselves down, Vial is still lurking right there to try to make a pass himself. So mm -hmm. you got to be smart with this pass if you're going to make it stick for Colby Eaglin out front. I mean, it looks like with the legs, you might even be put back to fifth if you make a huge mistake here, so... Um, just try to keep it up and yeah, I'm just try not to have any legs coming on right now. We're still pretty close, even with the little bit of a gap back to fourth. Yep. They all slipped back just a little bit, just a couple mistakes and Carter's now lurking into the frame, trying to close up on Pablo Vial. Again, these guys splitting lines. Hubbard's still trying to get this inside. I feel like Eaglin is waiting for Hubbard to make a small bobble there so that he can scrub the Jesus out of the finish line and make a pass on him. <laughs> I think that's what he's trying to do. I think he's about to go for something here, maybe. Let's oh, see. No. Funnels in behind, content to follow for the time being. We've made it through lap six. We are on lap seven. And Jacob Hubbard is still leading the main event in San Francisco. It is frantic action at the front, though, as Eaglin is all over him trying to figure out a way by. It's that triple single cleanly again to the inside. Eaglin still has not sized up an opportunity. 
I feel like Eaglin now maybe just settling, waiting for mistake. Let's see. Into the whoops. Eaglin um, really I'm, clean there. I'm loving to see this out of Hubbard. He's, unfortunately, I don't get to see this very often um, because normally it doesn't happen very often, but loving to see it right now. Charging down into this corner. Hubbard still leads. Again, going to cut to the inside. Defensive line. Very and, smooth in there. Yeah, that was really clean this that time. That was super clean. And look at who's back. Pablo Vial knocking on the door from third. The TSCZ Productions number 30. Eaglin just cased the double before that triple, and Vial is right there. Looked like uh, Carter may have been catching up a bit. So, yeah, put in a pretty good steamer and caught up this back a bit. I think so. I think you're absolutely right that Carter is knocking on the door here soon we might have a four rider battle great to see that these guys have stayed on two wheels as long as they have Normally, oh yeah we see the front three at some point maybe have a crash or something but the battle is still raging at some point the dam is going to burst someone is going to make a pass and we'll see what happens hubbard bouncing through oh, the whoops there's... off the side of the track goes vial and he goes down oh almost had it saved yeah just swapped at the end and see, put now it's the just deck. curse right there oh so yeah <laughs> here comes carter Carter from third is lurking in the shadows, and Hubbard and Eagland are going to start sensing the number one machine closing up behind them. Carter lays in at a 56-4, 56-1 his best lap. Both these guys still in the 57s. Well, actually, Hubbard just went 56-9, so a little bit faster than Eagland that last time by. But, uh, man, Carter's laying in those quick times, and oh, yeah. he's going to keep inching closer and closer to this lead battle. Hubbard, a small mistake right there. Will he still triple in? Yes, just Easily. barely. He's going to get it. <laughs> yeah, that's what Carter does. He just he just takes off laps and just consistently half a second, quarter second faster. Oh, oh than everyone else around him. Wow, what a save by Hubbard landing on the top blocks before the Supercross triple right there. Eaglin's on him. Whoa. Hubbard's swapping, but a good save. Just kind of teetering back and forth in the whoops just a little bit right there. And now Whoa. Eaglin is trying to find his way. Let's see if he goes for the pass here. No, he settles in right behind him again. And Carter is now really getting close. Change of lines. Hubbard goes outside that time. And Carter lays in a 56-4 to a 57-5 and a 57-8. Oh, I thought Hubbard was going through the front door right there. <laughs> Eaglin is like, please don't crash in front of me right now. Trying to figure out a way by you. Not quite close enough yet. He's almost alongside of him. Does he go for this the pass? This could be it right here? here. Down the inside into the yeah, corner. Oh, nope. no. Funnels in behind him again. Keeps it clean. On to lap number 10 we go. Eight minutes have come and gone, almost nine minutes into this moto. What is going to happen first, Doc? What are we about to see? Man, I'm honestly seeing Carter get up to him and, and put some uh, some pressure on the backside of, of second place and um, see if maybe they can make a mistake out of him and just do some team taxis here, you know? <laughs> maybe a little bit of... A sandwich situation for Phil's putting yep. district designs in the middle of it. Back to the inside line for Hubbard. It's that line Working really, really well clean. for him. I think that's where Carter's gaining a lot of his time uh, to catch up to this battle as well as continuing to hit that inside clean. Yeah, it's not a gap anymore, folks. He is there. Yeah, he is there. less than a second. He's not even outside of the picture anymore. He is firmly in it when you see them going through these corners. So Eaglin now has to go back from attacking only. To a little bit of defense as well to keep Carter behind him. Carter made a small mistake in that rhythm section, so Eaglin has a bit more breathing room for the time being. But as we approach the halfway point of this, Hubbard is still leading this race. Seven tenths in it, he has had Eaglin on his neck this entire time, and he's still holding on out front. And we've got just under 10 minutes and a lap, so we should be. We're still going to see some great racing. Oh, this is going to be a barn burner with Carter still trying to close that gap down from behind. And Hubbard win his second career 450 main event. Eaglin looking for his first win of the season. He's got, I think, six or seven main event wins to his tally. And Carter is in the 20s trying to work his way to the all-time record this year, which is still a possibility for the defending champs to get to. And we're about to find out in the second half of this main event who's walking out as the winner of the San Francisco MX Simulator Supercross. Eaglin losing a little bit of ground. Carter closing that gap back down a little bit more. It's still Nico Martini in fourth having a great ride. Pablo Vial fifth, and then Caleb Hall sixth. Padani seventh, Gummison in eighth. Spencer Turley a strong ride in ninth after his teammate just hit the podium. And Seabolt had made it all the way back to 10th. Yes, he is around Jack Haley into the top 10. Is that Hubbard down after the whoops oh, it is? Goodness. 
Oh no, the 78 machine. On lap 12, flawless. six times two. Flawless <laughs> for so long, and he goes from the lead to fifth just like that. Vial, Marchini go by as well. And the battle for the lead between Eaglin and Carter is on. Side by side, duelies over the finish line jump. Carter squares it off. Gonna go side by side on this triple as well. They throw duelies again. Let's see if Carter tries to make a quick pass. I know I saw Carter earlier quadding out of this rhythm, so I don't know what he's gonna do here, but uh, oh, he just follows him straight through that. Rider down, just got out of the way as they Woo. got to that corner. I think that may be D. Davis on the 37. Not quite sure, it's one of the Cowies though, and Carter swinging way wide not to get hung up in that, but it's Colby Eaglin now leading the race here in San Francisco. We got eight minutes and a lap left oh, to go. Lappers, lappers down, down in the whoops. Oh, Eaglin's trying to go right, oh. and he gets hung up by him, and the lapper goes down with him. Carter takes over the race lead. Ah, oh, Eaglin it's guessed like that the lapper would get up and go left. It's like it's scripted. <laughs> and he got up and went right and takes him down. So Carter takes over the race lead. He's putting himself in the right spots at the right times. Yep, and it's now Pablo Vial up into second place. Nico Marchini third. That lap rider is still right there battling with our leaders. Trying to get them out of the way. Back to Hubbard, who just made the pass on Eaglin, who was getting up from his crash. So now Eaglin fifth, Hubbard fourth, Marcini in third, and that Ooh. lapper almost just landed. And Marcini's down. Yeah. Oh, and, and he Hub gets Hubbard, and Eaglin almost got hung up. We got e. Davis right there. So Vial now has some breathing room in second as Carter continues to lead this race. And he is pulling away at the front. Well, we missed the halfway rundown, so we'll try to get through this one quickly. Carter is now leading from Vial. Colby Eaglin into third. Ah, oh, Hubbard just went down. He was in fourth. So going through is... Oh, no. Hubbard still picked it up in fourth? No. I thought Martini went by. No, I guess Hubbard's still in fourth. Okay. Martini fifth. Caleb Hall in sixth. Johnny Padani seventh. Jared Gummison in eighth. Spencer Turley ninth. And Jeremy Siebold has climbed his way inside of the top ten. Brandon Castellaneta, 11th. Trevor Burns, 12th. Jack Haley, 13th. Anthony Pachone in 14th. Jeremy Schiabro, 15th. With Tyler Lang in 16th. Matt Cromie is 17th. Daniel Mills, 18th. Devin Davis, 19th. Seth Carr, 20th. J.R. Ray is 21st. And Connor Holiak has disconnected. He is out of this race. So it was materializing into something awesome. And it's slowly just pulled away from itself as Hubbard crashed away the lead and then the very next lap Eaglin went down in the whoops on a lapped rider as well Carter almost just slid it out right there as Pablo Vial's got his head down Vial pace wise is not that far off of what Carter was doing 56-2 Carter went 55-9 57-6 right now as he's trying to lap his teammate Matt Cromie Vial just goes into let's see 56-2 wow look at that so he just went 1.4 seconds faster than our leader, Braden Carter, out front. Pablo Vial has come to play tonight in San Francisco, Doc. Oh, yeah. <coughs> Man's riding good, for sure. Good to see another face like Vial get in the mix and really dice it up with our lead group. Jumps off the track a little bit right there. He's got <laughs> a lot of time behind him to Eaglin, so he kind of kind of has that smooth... Flowing. Oh, that was Chromie. I thought it was maybe Carter. I thought Carter. it was Carter for a second. I was like, oh, no. You got to see those red plates. The flash of the red plates yep. is what really does it for you. Carter in the more deep blue tonight. Get up instead of Chromie, who's in that kind of electric light blue stuff. But Carter's now just got five minutes and a lap left to go. Lap traffic. Smart move by Carter. That was really tight with uh, one of the district designs rider. Maybe Seth Carr. And then Carter. No clue, but they didn't have a clue what was going on around them. <laughs> Carter kind of went defensive in the very next corner as well. I think he thought maybe he's going to get taken out. Not sure. Well, the way Seth cut over, if that was Seth, yeah. um, that was a very I'm trying to mess you up move. Yep. Marcini fourth and Hubbard rounds out the top five still, so maybe a battle brewing for them for fourth before long. Johnny Padani has Caleb Hall right on his tail. This is a good fight for sixth. As Hall and Padani go after each other a little bit. They got back to Spencer Turley uh, behind them. But a couple of guys that definitely factor in as guys that you expect to be inside of the top 10. But uh, things maybe didn't go their way at the opening round. And now turning it around in round two and finding themselves pretty much exactly where we expect them to be. Yep. So Padani, Caleb Hall. 
late in this race. You got four minutes left on the clock. If you're Caleb Hall and you're chasing Johnny Padani right here, how long do you think he's going to wait to try to make a pass? Man, uh, I don't think he's going to try to wait at all. I think he's just going to go for it. As soon as his first opportunity, he's going for it. Yep. We're so late into this moto that you don't have time to waste. Yeah, limited time on the clock, and time is a premium in Moto Option Supercross. No question about that. So if you all still charging, trying to get to Carter, and it's actually tightening up quite a decent little bit here. 2.8, it's 56.4 last time by to a one flat point three. Not sure if Carter maybe he had a little mistake <laughs> right there or something like that. I, I think he's just kind of backing it down, making sure that he uh, doesn't make huge mistakes. And probably going to end up right around the same lap time as we all. Maybe not this lap, but after Vial's, this lap. We all got it down to 2.6. 2.4. Then a 56.4 to a 56.6. So Carter tried to respond. Who's this lapped rider in the way right now? It's a TSCZ Productions rider. I think it's Tyler Lang. He's going to go off the track. 2.7 seconds. Can Pablo Vial be the man to upset Braden Carter tonight in San Francisco? Lap traffic moving aside. Carter Ooh. a little bit through the front door. That was almost too steezy. Mm -hmm. 2.6 still the gap as Carter deals with getting around some lapped riders. And a couple of them getting sideways in oh. the whoops in front of him. Carter bouncing oh weirdly. Almost oh gets hit by God. that lapped rider. And Vial's going to see Carter having to deal with all this ahead of him and realize this is an opportunity to close that gap down quickly. Lapper's still not moving out of the way just yet. Carter goes inside trying to get... I think this is Jack Haley that he's trying to get right here on the 212. Maybe D-Mills. I'm not Whoever sure. Whoever it is was being really nice. Walk far inside right there to get out yep. of the way and now Vial's got to deal with them oh, just moves aside right there very nicely done I don't know who that was I think a district designs rider and then uh, off the inside of the track I think I can't tell who the number is and yeah, I know I, I don't have the skins well. but 1.3 seconds the gap and a minute and a half left on the clock can Pablo Vial get this thing done and win his first ever Moto Option Supercross main event oh man this is getting tight. And Carter's still kind of hopping through those whoops a little awkwardly. Oh, stressful. This is stressful, stressful indeed. I'm sure it's very stressful for Carter. Oh, yeah. Feeling that pressure coming from behind. And not a teammate. It's not even a normal rival. It's Pablo Vial coming to you out of France. Up and over the finish line. Jump with a minute left on the clock. It's going to be really tight. Oh. oh, Carter front end tucking down. Just push that front end right over. Wow, what a mistake from the champ. And he's going to pick it up and not get that double. Does he go for the triple? Yeah, he's got it clean. But Pablo Vial has taken over the race lead in San Francisco. See if you can stay in it mentally and bring it to the end. Wow. So the pressure was on, and Carter just a weird little front end tuck right there. Not very common to see those types of mistakes out of the champ. But tonight it bites him, and now Vial is going to, I believe, see the white flag this time by. It's going to be really close. Ah, he might not. See I don't think he's going to see it. 12 seconds on the clock. We have 10 seconds left. 8 seconds. We'll see if that board goes white in the upper right-hand corner of your screen. Oh, maybe now it will. I don't think so. It did not. Oh, my goodness. He missed it by maybe a second. Oh, this could be great for him or horrible for him. Wow, so Vial's got two to go. And Carter has an extra lap to maybe make something happen 7.2 seconds down. One leg's away. One leg's away indeed. Big gap back to Marcini, so this is really between these two to try to settle if, this win. If I'm Carter, I am pushing as hard as I possibly can right now. Yeah, I mean, Carter, he has, has nothing, nothing to lose. lose. He's got 17 seconds behind him, so what are you exactly. going to do? If you crash, you're still second. But Vial, man, he's, he's got a pretty good flow going right now. He does, he does. But we saw Carter did as well until he didn't. I like Vial kind of doubling through the top yeah, of the whoops right there. Yeah, him. 7.2 seconds the gap now. As this time, Vial will indeed see the white flag. This is going to be a 23-lap main event. Very long one, about as long as it possibly can get in terms of total time. Because 21 minutes are now on the clock. It's almost going to be a 22-minute main event as Vial 
checks in trying to win his first ever Moto Option Supercross main event here in San Francisco. A little bit of lap traffic left ahead of him to try to figure it out, but he could be on his way to a big win. Oh man, Doc, the pressure is on. Oh yeah. How nervous is he? How much is he thinking about it at this point? Uh, I think he's yelling at these lappers coming ahead of him. <laughs> for <Move>. real. <laughs> Got to get through the whoops clean. This is critical right here for Vial. Whoa. Bouncing, bouncing, oh. sideways, goes off the track and stays on oh, two my wheels. Goodness. But Carter had gone down, so I think he's okay. Wow, that was a little bit sketchy. I thought there was a legs right there. Wow. That's crazy. How about it, folks? TSCZ Productions. Pablo Vial, first career main event win. Pablo Vial gets it done in San Francisco. Oh, ripping. my goodness. Oh. Goes right for the triple <laughs> and legs it. Carter will pick up second. But the 30 machine is on top tonight. Wow, what a race. Nico Marcini, he's also going to get on the box. The 53 machine with a brilliant ride for Phil Ski and Snowboard rounds out the podium. Holby Eaglin battling for the win for so much of this ends up in fourth. Caleb Hall made it all the way into the top five. He got Hubbard late. And Caleb Hall will round out our top five here tonight. Hubbard, the magic number six as he finishes six just ahead of Johnny Padani, his teammate. Jeremy Seabolt clawed all the way back to eighth. And with Carter getting second, that's a really kind of big win for him to have a little bit more points fall his way. Brandon Castellaneta ends up ninth, last guy in the lead lap. So Spencer Turley rounded out the top 10. T Lang 11th, Gummison 12th, Burns 13th, Scalbro 14th, D Mills, Pachone, Haley, Carr, Davis, Chromie, Reyes, and Holiak. Wow, what a ride, Doc. Man, it was a great night of watching some racing and a lot of mistakes and which made it even better shout out to pablo vial first oh yeah too. great ride that is awesome to see a fresh winner here on the circuit of moto option supercross and uh carter keeps the red plate but we got a different winner here tonight in san francisco and that was a good one for sure we're definitely not seeing it we definitely just saw that he's not having a perfect season and <laughs> not a perfect <laughs> season the perfect season is over for brayden carter oh my goodness well that is going to do it for us tonight here from San Francisco, Kellen Brower, Doc Smith. Doc, thanks for joining us tonight, yeah, man. I had a great time. It was great to have you in studio. Definitely be sure to follow him, Doc Smith 464 on Instagram. You can follow his journey. And again, shout out to uh, Smith Pro Rodeos and Z's Main Street for yeah, getting some... you out here. You're racing West Coast Supercross. Oh, yeah. And uh, man, it was super awesome to have you in studio tonight. Any any final thoughts or takeaways from the racing? Dude, this, tr this track was gnarly tonight. Yeah. Just watching them, they were, everyone was struggling. So. Oh. But man, it was it was great. I had a great time. Ready to race it this weekend? Ready to race it this weekend is muddy or not. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, no question about it. So fantastic night of racing. Of course, shout out to Race Factory Gaming and the Race Factory Gaming track crew for getting the track out to us. And appreciate the the Design Lab Co. for coming on board and sponsoring the broadcast with us this year. Be sure to check out what they have to offer from graphics and cutouts and everything beyond that as well. So thank you guys for tuning in to round two of Moto Option Supercross. We'll be back next week for the San Diego round. Going to be a fun night, 50th anniversary of Supercross. So we're going to see some retro theme throwback rounds. Uh, going to see a lot of graphics coming out of that one. That's going to be a lot of fun. And um, yeah, thanks again, guys, for tuning in. Doc, thank you. Appreciate yeah. you for coming by. And we'll see you guys next week in San Diego. So long for now. <laughs>